Hello, everyone. Thank you again for joining us today. Um, we have a second day of our workshop. The workshop which uh, we are organizing together with um, the Center for Special Information Science at the University of Tokyo. Um, today we will be talking about the real uh, time kinematic. If you have any questions to, to the speakers, please uh, write them in the chat. And after the, um, the lecture note, we will present those questions to, to lecturer. Our um, first uh, topic uh, today is introduction to real-time kinematic. And Mr. Nobuaki Kubo, uh, from the Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology will speak about. Mr. Kuba, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Yeah, uh, good, to, good, good morning, good afternoon everyone. So I am Nobuaki Kubo uh, from uh, Tumsat. Uh, sorry, I will share my contents. So could you see, can you see the slides? Yes, we see your slides okay, and if you, you can uh, change it to the presentation mode, please. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I will start uh, my talk. So I'm from Tumusat, uh, Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology. So we say Tumusat. So today I'm going to introduce the outline of RTK uh, or PPP and a uh, little bit about QGSS collection service using about uh, maybe 30 or 40 minutes. So after following me, so my co-workers are going to introduce RTK PPP more in details, including how to use open source software and data processing. So please enjoy this session. Yeah, so uh, this is what is RTK. So uh, probably, uh, as you already know, so real-time kinematic is a technique used to enhance the precision of position uh, data derived from satellite-based positioning system, GNSS, uh, such as GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Navig, and Beidou, also QGSS. So it uses measurements of the phase of the signal's carrier wave in addition to the information content of the signal and relies on the single reference station or interpolated virtual station to provide real-time corrections, uh, providing up to centimeter level accuracy. Yeah, as you can see, these uh, results from uh, single point positioning and differential genesis and RDK. Yeah, the accuracy is quite different uh, in for each uh, positioning method. Actually, these figures have have uh, same same scales, same scales. So this is 50 centimeters. So you can also see the enlargement of RTK result on the light top. In fact, sub centimeter. So sub centimeter within one centimeter level position can be obtained under open sky condition using RTK method. So the reason why for the best timing to use uh, this RTK method is that the uh, consumer grade GNSS receivers are ready and the performance is quite good. So we have checked the performance of UBROX F9P and Septentorio M2A recently. These RTK performance do not disappoint your expectations. So survey grade receivers are actually good, but the general people cannot purchase because of the cost. Yeah, in 2019, so um, one year or two years ago, so SoftBank started the RTK service using the LTE networks. That was very surprised to us, uh, but they have good infrastructures for GNS base stations. 
So this glare unit, this glare unit uh, is a product including Genesis and LT and the internal antenna. So in fact, using external antenna uh, is much better for the signal receptions. About uh, 50 US dollars per month. So we can use RTK in everywhere in Japan as long as Sotomang LTE is available. As I mentioned earlier, the advent of very good low-cost multi-genesis dual frequency receiver strengthens this service. So looking at the features of, for example, looking at the features of this Sotomang service, more than 3,300 base stations were already installed. This means that every 114 square kilometer, we have base stations. It is very dense and enough for RTK. So once we are in the LTE service area, we can use RTK. Also, handover. Handover has been carried out uh, very smoothly. We have checked this handover in Tokyo and it was totally okay. So this service provides not only collection service, but also uh, cloud services. So HRTK means we have lower unit and the unit estimates the RTK position. On the other hand, in the case of cloud RTK, cloud system, we have lower unit, but the RTK position is estimated in the cloud systems. So they will use each one according to the request of various users. So there are many varieties of applications. So using precise positions, so agriculture, autonomous agriculture and the constructions, intelligent transport system, and drone, and wearable and sports, monitoring of infrastructures. Probably these applications are very common to the other, not only Japan, but also all countries. So not only, yeah, uh, not only Sotomang, but also NTT Docomo, which is the biggest carrier uh, company, also starts RTK service in 2019. So they have used uh, 1,300 GeoNet. So GeoNet means a GNSS Earth Observation Network System controlled by Geospatial Information Authority of Japan and local base stations controlled by uh, NTT Docomo. So NTT starts the also cloud RDK service. So NTT Docomo is a subsidiary of NTT. So recently, RTK service is very hot in Japan. Probably there are many potential users. So like as hands-free driving. So this autopilot system by Nissan Corporation do not use Genesis so much, however, the precise position is vital for moving platform everywhere and anytime. So next slide. So Nissan uh, provides a Pro Pilot 2 and Subaru uh, provides the iSight X. Both service uses precise position from Genesis. Actually, Nissan started to use Sheila's service for this purpose. So I will explain Sheila's later. Uh, Shiraz is a kind of RTK service through QGSS. Uh, furthermore, precise 3D map were used for these both services, and precise 3D map were generated, of course, using RTK technology. Okay, let's move on to the uh, different topic. I have talked about RTK for now, but you might know uh, PPP, uh, Precise Point Positioning. So PPP is Precise Point Positioning and it does not need to receive collections. So differences between uh, RTK and PPP are as follows. The big difference is the time to get centimeter accuracy. As you know, RTK is instantaneous, almost instantaneous. So PPP takes about 5 to 30 minutes maybe 40 minutes. So it depends on ionospheric corrections. So the, uh, you know, to get to maybe 5 to 10 centimeter accuracy, so it takes about 5 to, yeah, 
15 or 20 minutes. So it depends on the ionospheric collection. So therefore, PPP is probably not suitable for moving platform with issues of cyclostrips because carrier phase is not tracked continuously. However, the difference will become small in the future. So RTK can be used for local area, but Shiraz PPP will be more suitable for wide area. So this table summarizes which error sources are sent to users in each positioning method. RTK usually sends collection data in the form of no separated errors. So it includes everything, satellite position, satellite clock, ionosphere, and troposphere. We cannot separate. And uh, SHIRAS, SHIRAS means, uh, so it's a kind of wide area RTK. So probably subcoluta will provide the similar uh, method. So they will separate satellite position and a satellite clock and ionosphere and a troposphere error sources in each error sources. And also PPP usually uh, broadcast satellite position and satellite clock. If they can provide uh, ionosphere corrections, they will, uh, you know, they will shorten the convergence time from 20, 30 minutes to five minutes. And if you look at the coverage, so RDK is probably uh, 50 kilometers about that. Uh, currently, the ionosphere situ uh, situation condition is, for example, in Japan, is quite good. It means that it's very smooth. It's static. Uh, it's, uh, it's not heavy. So that's why uh, up, up to 50 kilometers is OK, RTK. Maybe 60, 70 kilometers is OK. On the other hand, SHILAS provide uh, these each error sources. So that's why the receiver side has to uh, estimate the position using the uh, probably ionosphere uh, free combinations. So we can use uh, mainland in Japan in everywhere. And a PPP, actually no limitations. As long as you can receive this, these satellite, precise satellite position and precise satellite clock. And also, if you have FGB, you can uh, use PPP AR. Yeah, so high accuracy positive service has already come. So RTK PPP are those core techniques. So I would like to introduce the collection services through Japanese QGSS. So we broadcast SHILAS and PPP collection message freely now. SHIRAS provide L6D signal. Uh, SHIRAS provider using L6D signal is a uh, Mitsubishi Corporation. And a PPP provider uh, using L6E signal is a uh, GPAS company. It is important that other countries consider the similar collection services. Uh, because other countries, you know, uh, consider not only consider but also will provide the similar collection services like uh, SHILAS, Wide Area RTK, or PPP. So RTK is not free actually, but SHILAS or PPP, these kinds of technology are maybe free if you have six L6 reception. For example, in the case of QGSS collection service. Okay, so SHIRAS uh, provide uh, maybe centimeter, six centimeter accuracy in 95. And uh, PPP provides about uh, 10 centimeter accuracy uh, in 15 to 30 minutes in Asia, Oceania regions. So I will skip ISRAS and MSAS today. Yeah, I personally imagine the good cycle. So it's cost a lot to develop the navigation satellite and uh, those operations. So furthermore, providing the collection, uh, collection service and uh, keeping the advanced technology requires money. To create the cost customer satisfaction is quite important uh, because these operations are based on the tax from people and the company. So we need to turn this good cycle. So this video shows the configurations of SHILAS. So SHILAS is short for Centimeter Level Augmentation Service. 
So observation data are gathered from, I guess, 300 base stations in Japan. And the collection data are generated by Mitsubishi Saba. Then each error sources, as I mentioned earlier, are broadcasted through QGSS. So satellite position and uh, satellite clock and the uh, troposphere and the uh, ionosphere corrections, uh, the interval are uh, like this. So compressing the large amount of those data uh, is quite uh, tough for them. So recently, the number of maximum satellites used for SHIRAS was increased to from 14 to 17. So Galileo can be used uh, for now. So, which means we can use GPS and QGSS and a Galileo satellite for this SHIRAS service. So, this figure shows the recent, uh, not recent, two, about two years ago, so test results under open sky conditions. The accuracy is satisfied with the uh, specification, six centimeters in horizontal. So I personally have evaluated SHIRAS collection data using commercial receiver in Kanto area. Kanto area means around Tokyo. The performance was usually okay under open sky condition and the convergence time is normally within one minute. However, uh, in the case of short gaps in the expressway, the convergence time was first below 10 seconds. It might depend on the RTK engine, which receiver you will use. So this is just a one example of the test course for SHILAS. So data was obtained in 2018. The receiver was a clock manufactured by Mitsubishi. So the, the duration was about 15 minutes. Uh, as a reference positions, we used to RTK. Okay, so the start point and uh, the like this. So this is the finish point. So our university. Yeah, this shows the temporal horizontal errors. So in fact, the fixed rate of RTK was about 90%. On the other hand, the fixed rate of SHILAS was about 77%. It seems to be that the difference was smaller than we expected because there are many overpasses at this course, even though relatively open sky conditions. So because overpasses, RTK as well as SHILAS have to be refixed. The standard deviation in horizontal errors was about five centimeters. That was not so bad. The maximum time to fix, maximum time to fix was about 95 seconds. That was okay for automobile because we can use IMU or speed sensors for uh, one or two minutes within maybe 50 centimeter level accuracy. Okay, let's move on to the PPP. So JAXA has developed Madoka PPP for many years, and the GPAS company will start to operate this uh, PPP collection service soon because JAXA is just an R&D institute, and they cannot just operate. They, can, they can't operate this service. As you can see, this figure. So PPP is very simple. So we gather the GNS data from actually 30 to 40 best stations in Japan, and of course, as well as outside in Japan, mainly Asian countries and Oceania regions. And the server can generate the product, which means a precise orbit, precise orbit and a precise uh, clock. Then QGSS broadcast uh, these collections to users. So currently, uh, GPS, GLONASS, QGSS, are available. So, but the Galileo will be added in the near future. So, after about approximately 15 to 20 minutes, we can get uh, 10 centimeter accuracy. So, with new method, we can shorten the time and the PPP AR uh, will be possible soon. So, a few years ago, so we have used the software receiver to decode Lex signal and the high-end GNS receiver plus not PC, and then we can get PPP result. But now, uh, all we need is just the receiver, shown in the, uh, these figures. So we, you will also have 
uh, F9P plus L6D kit uh, is already coming, uh, provided by Dr. Dinesh. So you will hear uh, about this uh, F9P plus L6D small kit. So PPP is possible in everywhere, uh, no limitation in baseline. So we have uh, evaluated PPP through QGSS since uh, 2019 using commercial receiver uh, on real time. So locations are one in Japan and seven in foreign countries in East Asia. Errors in each station are evaluated based on true positions uh, according to ITRF 2014. Uh, this is quite suitable for moving platform in global ship and airplane because we can use the position uh, very uh, simultaneously in all areas, in everywhere. So the test locations are showing here. Uh, the Japan, uh, so sorry, th there is no pictures in Japan. Uh, Japan and uh, Chilalongko University in Thailand and the University of Philippines uh, in, in Manila and uh, MJIIT in Malaysia and the Kato University in Australia. So University of Indonesia in Jakarta. And the, uh, yeah, several months ago we could start uh, in Singapore, uh, Nanyang uh, Technology uh, University. Um, and soon, uh, probably this year, I hope this year, so we can start in Hanoi. Uh, no, 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 Hanoi, sorry, in a, uh, sorry, uh, uh, what was the name of the, Ho anyway, Ho so, yeah, Ho Chi Minh, thank you, thank you. So Ho Chi Minh in <laughs> Vietnam, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, so th th this is just a, uh, Example of the real time uh, PPP results through the QGSS at Chilalongkorn University, so April 1st in 2020, last year. So, as you can see, uh, this temporal horizontal errors, so it is quite good. So, it seems to be uh, standard deviations in horizontal in, yeah, three to three, three centimeters, uh, but uh, actually in the altitude, vertical uh, directions is usually uh, 10 to yeah, 15 centimeters. Yeah, this is similar uh, result at uh, Tamsat, Tamsat in Japan, so June 30 last year. So although you can see the uh, some uh, jump, uh, but uh, other data is quite good. Yeah, probably two to three centimeters except for this jump. Yeah, so when we look at the uh, uh, long-term period, in, for example, in August uh, in six countries, so these results are all, all results are based on real-time commercial receivers. So using QGSS Madoka. So from Khartoum, Indonesia, Japan, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, and the Philippines. So seems to be horizontal average errors is all all data within 10 centimeters, and horizontal standard deviations is seems to be five to 10 centimeters. Yeah, so this is no AR, no ambiguity resolutions, or just a PPP. So the, this is uh, actually, this is exactly the actual performance uh, provided by uh, Madoka, QGSS Madoka PPP. So in September, uh, October, November, December, we have already evaluated, so the, the results are quite similar, similar, very stable. Yeah, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, so we have just started at the Nanyang Technological University. Thank you so much. And uh, this is the uh, start today, uh, September 19. So seems to be standard deviation is, yeah, four centimeters and three centimeters. But uh, yeah, altitude is 15 centimeters in standard deviation. So it's like that. Okay, so. Yeah, update of PPP via QGSS in the near future. So, uh, so we will use, we can we can use the PPP AR soon. Yeah, uh, with FCB, and uh, Galileo satellite will be added uh, in the process of it and uh, clock, uh, which means that we can shorten the time to fix, uh, providing the ionosphere collection information via QGSS. This is our very 
uh, important uh, topic and R and D uh, for now. Uh, we can use not only PPP but also Shilas according to the requests uh, of users. Now, actually, uh, uh, as I showed uh, in the previous, uh, previous slide, real-time PPP performance in seven countries uh, is available through this website. This website. If you are interested, please check uh, this website. And again, so PPP AR and the current current QGSS model PPP is free. I can say that, but uh, PPP AR and the Galileo version, I, I am not sure. So we have to ask GPass company, uh, the service provider of QGSS Madoka PPP. Okay, so uh, we, we just showed the uh, uh, applications of QGSS collection services. So, so this is the one application of Genesis with QGSS collection service in Hokkaido, Hokkaido, very northern area, northern part of Japan. So this is a snow removal work uh, on roads in Hokkaido. So Shilas uh, was actually used in this test. Uh, this test has just started in March uh, 2019. So we usually use the word I, word I constructions, but uh, here say uh, I snow. So S is smart, N is nice, and O is operation, and W is work. So until now, uh, we always rely on the talented operator uh, in this field. However, the labor saving is urgent task uh, in Japan because it is impossible to keep the number of the talented worker in the near future. So therefore, uh, these tasks we want to reduce. So where we are and the uh, operation of the machine and the safety confirmations. In the end, all we need is only uh, driving. So again, uh, labor saving is extremely important issue in Japan. So because we are sure to face aging society and decreasing the population. So this is auto browsing and unbursing. So this is a potential application using QGSS collection services. Uh, another QGS, another potential application. So auto browsing and unbursing. Uh, probably uh, wider RTK as well as the PPP can be used. You know, support for surveying at the construction site. So ground subsidence monitoring uh, by the tunnel. Uh, actually, we have faced these issues uh, recently. So that was very big news in Japan. And uh, this is very important to monitor uh, this kind of ground subsidence by the tunnel continuously cost effective and safety management. So before we have used the total stations, but uh, probably RTK Genesis much more cost, uh, low cost, and uh, it is easy to get the data and the continuous data is uh, really okay. Yeah, so we have tested in several uh, real construction sites and uh, it seems to be yeah, one centimeter accuracy is okay. So one centimeter real time monitoring will be okay, but the millimeter level, so we are uh, checking now. So land recognition is of course, uh, will be the future uh, very hot topic, uh, not only in Japan, but also in the world. So tsunami detections. So, so, so the light picture, light figure shows the real time, uh, real time V moni monitored uh, RTK results. So he uh, probably uh, number six or uh, five, number six or five, Kamaishi, Kamaishi in the uh, Iwate prefecture, and uh, at the uh, 2011 very big earthquake. So we have. Uh, we have uh, found a 6.7 meters height uh, using this uh, tsunami buoy. And uh, actually the Kamaishi is offshore 20 kilometers, which means the depth is about one, no, 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 about uh, 200 meters, 200 meters. So therefore uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, close to the ocean, close to the uh, coast, so this 6.7 meters will be uh, three times or four times as height. So that's what's true. That's what's true. 
So actually, this tsunami monitor uh, was very uh, effective to see uh, beforehand, maybe 30 or 40 minutes. But unfortunately, uh, it is very difficult uh, for the people to, you know, uh, get away. Yeah, that, that is much more important. Yeah. Anyway, so tsunami buoy was very effective to monitor uh, this kind of, you know, uh, beforehand, 30 or 40 minutes uh, emergency. Yeah, DPS. So as you know, uh, dynamic positioning system will be uh, very important for ship users because ship will use this DPS technology for autonomous uh, ship. Yeah, actually, uh, probably PPP is uh, already used. Maybe Fuglo or uh, Triple RTX. Uh, maybe uh, Madoka PP also can be used for this purpose. Uh, I've heard of that. The 50 centimeter into the RMS is required for this, uh, you know, uh, DPS to construct the uh, product, uh, construct to construct the construction uh, on the uh, ocean. So measuring the depth in the uh, river or sea also uh, it's very uh, popular uh, in Japan. So this is the thesis of my students. Okay. So I will summarize my talk. So high accuracy society has already come uh, in everywhere uh, in the world. So we can choose RTK or so Yashiras in Japan, but a wide area RTK or PVP3 uh, high accuracy positioning methods. So various applications are assumed in the future. Uh, yeah, already, already uh, available uh, in yeah, various applications. So yeah, for Japan, so lack of manpower is a quite big issue. So we need uh, some sort of automations. So instantaneous centimeter decimeter level positioning is definitely attractive. So not a mini, uh, not a meter level or a ten meter level. So instantaneous centimeter and decimeter level positioning is definitely attractive. Uh, of course. So integrity and uh, reliability issues will be emerged. So therefore, uh, there are some uh, R&D and papers in IOM and uh, maybe yeah some companies in you know European countries. So in Japan is actually delayed. So we are going to uh, investigate this issue, these issues, and also spoofing and interference is is very yeah uh, annoying us. So one was a motivation to promote future genesis six or six, uh, six, uh, five, six, seven is already decided and uh, more uh, is the, of course, realization of QGS use for some applications. OK, uh, uh, my talk is ended. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. So do, do you have any questions? Yes, yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Kubo. There are a um, few questions for you. I will, ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I will read them through for you. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the first question is, yesterday one speaker mentioned that RTK should be not greater than 40 kilometer. Is the maximum yeah. coverage distance 50 kilometer then? Ah, OK, thank you. Thank you, a good question. So yeah, I have personally checked the RTK performance using Ublox F9P. F9P, maybe you know, yeah, it's quite good uh, RTK engine. So it seems to be uh, 50 kilometers in, is okay in Japan, in Japan. Uh, so I'm sorry, uh, in different countries and different ionosphere conditions, of course, different. But uh, 50 kilometers is actually okay. Maybe for last one, two, three years, okay. Because in Japan, Ionosphere condition is quite smooth. Quiet. Mm. Yeah, quiet. Mm. Sorry. It depends on the country. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this yeah. is Dines. So let me add a comment on that because uh, that was in my presentation that I mentioned. So it, it's a general figure, not uh, strict 40 kilometers. So you can go to 50 or you can limit to 20. It depends how you want and what accuracy level you want to achieve and also how long you want to, I mean, the ambiguity resolution time and so on. And 
in the error section, then I showed you a figure how the accuracy is men, uh, mentioned in terms of the actual accuracy and uh, PPM, okay, parts per million. So you can calculate the error you can expect from that PPM value if it's a 40 kilometer or 50 kilometer like that. The higher the distance between the base and the rubber, the larger the errors. And if you go quite long, like 100 kilometer, of course you can do RTK, but you will not get a fixed solution. So many, maybe very, very low fixed rate. So that's not a good, good idea to do RTK. Yeah. So that 40 or 50 or 30 is just a guideline. So don't, just please don't guideline. think yeah. that this is a very strict figure you have to follow. Okay, so you have yeah. to do the test and see the performance in your location. But the standard guideline is don't exceed. Yeah. Standard uh, guideline, sorry, maybe 30 kilometer. Yeah. <laughs> Standard guideline, maybe 30, 40. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yes. Okay, the next question. What's yeah. about ionospheric variations in PPP? Okay, okay. If severe scintillation occur, do we see variation? In, yeah, probably you will be able to see variation in PPP result. Because as long as as long as uh, you know the receiver can track the carrier phase. If the receiver cannot track the carrier phase, so PPP solutions uh, is no meaning. Okay, mm -hmm. and also uh, you could also see in signal to noise ratio uh, in the uh, ionospheric variations or scintillations. Yeah, I is that okay? Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. So mm -hmm. next is what is the interval for the error? Ah, interval, interval for the error source. Ah, yeah, yes, yes. So this is probably the question for Shilas. So Shilas provides uh, not one second interval, uh, you know, correction because it's only two kilo BPS. Two kilo BPS, they have to cover Japan. So it's very, very uh, uh, tough for them. So that's why uh, 30 seconds for satellite precise position, ionosphere, and troposphere. But the satellite clock, you know, it is very important. So therefore, five seconds. You can measure Pacific Ocean and can access the distance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So there is an RTK GPS app for Android free of charge with any trip include. Okay, okay. Maybe this is for Dinesh Sensei, Dr. Dinesh. <laughs> yeah, there, there are so many different types. So tomorrow morning, I, not yeah. sorry, I mean tomorrow. So I will explain about the various types of uh, Android based systems. Also, we have our own system. So RTK Droid and Madroid that we will introduce tomorrow. So maybe we better discuss this tomorrow. OK, thank you. Yeah. So do you have a website showing costing for one base stations? Oh, OK, OK, to, to, what is maximum area cover? OK, so maximum area, the coverage area uh, for PPP, maybe QGSS PPP coverage area is, uh, you, you know, uh, it's probably East Asian countries is hugely okay because uh, we have GEO satellite, geostationary satellite over the uh, Philippines. Yeah, it is true. So that that's why the coverage area for PPP service is East Asian countries is okay, totally okay. Mm -hmm. So East Asia, yeah, yeah, Australia, New Zealand, Pacific. Yeah, Australia, yeah, Australia, New Zealand, yes, yes. And up maybe up to where? <laughs> little yeah, bit of yeah. west of Asia and little bit of north of Europe for a very short time. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like a Moscow. Oh, really? So you can see a little bit of that. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah from Moscow, but you can't see in Vienna uh, or Finland that's or, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's just so, for certain hours, yeah. OK, so the next question is you have a website showing costing for one base station. What, what does it mean? So yeah, I showed mm. I showed the website. This is a PPP result. Maybe. 
Yeah, for costing. Costing. Costing means uh, I think he the, it means this the is Sotoban? cost. Sotoban? Cost. Do you have a website cost for one base station? No. How much one base station cost? Ah, if, how if, much if, one base station cost? <laughs> yeah, if ah, we okay, need to okay. put. So yeah, so you know. Because Genesis is, you know, it depends on the receiver. Mm, yeah. if, you, if you use a low cost good receiver, it's just uh, 200, 300 dollars. And uh, if you have uh, internet access or N trip server, it's done. <laughs> it's mm. it's done. It's just, uh, yeah, that's it. Maybe yeah. so around 1,000. One thousand yeah, dollar for the systems, and of course you need uh, some uh, antenna setting and some physical work, so that is uh, extra. But for the receivers and antenna, maybe the low cost. So that we'll do the exercise later, and also we'll do tomorrow. So that's about the one thousand dollar system. Yeah, yeah. Including the most all important these thing is, uh, yeah. Most important thing is we have to pass away to the university. <laughs> Yeah. If if we can install the base station, <laughs> okay or not, we have to ask university. So that's why the uh, communications between universities in foreign countries is quite uh, important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what what is the reason that Shiras is using GPS QGIS Galileo signal, but the PPP using? Oh yeah yeah, yeah. This is true. This is true. So, uh, PPP team is uh, uh, actually trying to use Galileo, but the uh, precise uh, orbit of Galileo is somehow uh, not easy for Japan. Yeah, so but uh, yeah, in the near future we can add Galileo. And uh, for Shiraz, you know, as you know, the GLONASS is, you know, uh, FDMA, Frequency Division Multiple Access, is different from CDMA. So we would like to, uh, you know, increase the performance of RTK. So therefore, Firstly, we chose GPS QGSS and now Galileo. And maybe in the near future, we will use GLONASS. But I hope, we hope GLONASS can broadcast CDMA. Yeah. So, what's the major difference between classical PPP and PPPAR? Ah, PPPAR. Yeah, PPPAR is just uh, if we reserve ambiguity resolution or we don't. Uh, reserve ambiguity. So that is the difference. If you could reserve ambiguity, uh, the result was much more like RTK. Like RTK. So, but the fractional, uh, FCB, the fractional, Nanda, carry phase bias, kata. Yeah, FCB we need, yeah, to reserve ambiguity. Mm. Yes. Yeah, what's the major difference? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. But, but that, and, uh, uh, and also uh, with the EAR, we, if we have EAR, so the, the, the time we have to wait is much smaller, I think, mm. for, for ambiguity. This one, like a uh, standard PPP, Madoka PPP, mm -hmm. we have to wait 15 to 20 minutes to get 10 centimeter accuracy. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. with the EAR, yeah, With you. the PPPAR, it will be, uh, I don't know, maybe five to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we need yeah, more data. Yeah, yes, yes. So the, uh, thank you so much for the suggestions. Mm -hmm. The receiver equipment for calls is, uh, yeah, 10, 10, 20K. Yeah, it depends on the receiver. So there is also the cost of building the physical monument and the installation mm -hmm. to consider. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see, but but uh, I can say that the uh, the locations I showed the university seven universities I showed uh, you know uh, already they have already installed the antenna uh, for their uh, research purpose, so that's why we can just uh, split you know the signal on determining height, which is better RTK or, or P, yeah, RTK will be better, but the PPP is similar, yeah. But the RTK is better, yeah. Can you give them an estimate leave, leaving the out the physical monument and the installation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Can you give 
आज एस में लीवी फिजिकल सो दिन ऐसे से व्हाट व्हाट डज इट मीन फॉर एस can you give an estimate at leaving the out the physical monument and installation and the ongoing data uh no sorry we cannot give you the cost estimates okay because uh, we are yes, not yes. the commercial we do the research so yes, yes. you can just find out in the market how much it cost the power and all these uh, the receivers or antenna but uh the we we are basically basically now doing with the low cost receiver so that's maybe few hundred dollars of receivers and maybe 100 200 dollars of antenna okay so all together the equipment cost is about uh, 1000 dollar but as you saw some posts here by the participants so you can find a course receiver receiver that's designed for a course that 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 will cost cost you uh, maybe $10,000 or $20,000 even $30,000 if you need a very special antenna so the price varies from maybe at least uh, $5,000 to $30,000 but it depends what you want to do and what how you want to do it and for what purpose whether it's only for R&D education and all you don't need a $10,000 receiver but yeah. if you really want to have a very very reliable dedicated service and to make a geodetic survey in your country maybe you need at least few of those stations and then you can complement additional stations with the low cost systems okay mm -hmm. okay so we are not saying that the those expensive uh, high costs are not good you do need them but mm -hmm. for the education and research purpose universities cannot afford 10 units of those 20,000 10,000 dollar receivers. Yeah 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 yeah. We need a uh, many maybe like uh, now we are producing 50 or 100 units to distribute to the universities and to do collaboration with you who are interested so we we need a uh, low cost systems. Mhm. Mm yes, yes yes. Yeah and uh, yeah major the main sea level yeah yeah RTK PPP can be used to measure main sea level. Yeah it is it is okay. Yeah, I have all those checked. Yes, I see. Thank you. Yes, yes. A guideline for equatorial regions for RTK. Oh, equator. Oh, it. <laughs> I I don't have it. Around this, around. So you didn't mention Pacific and Oceania can access this service. Can you elaborate more on this? Elaborate. Yeah, you can access. So if you want to try, so yes. I will tell you how to do that tomorrow. Okay. Yes, so yes. you can, uh, if you have, do, so please, uh, please make sure that if you have a mm -hmm. dual frequency receiver, mm -hmm. so I will show you how mm -hmm. to do that in your country. Mm -hmm. And if you can give me access, uh, if you give me a, a access right to, to, to get the data from your receiver, like uh, this is from Tonga. So. Oh. Yes, our Tonga. participant yeah, from yeah. Tonga. So yeah, 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 yeah. can you give me the access, entry access to your server? I mean yeah. the receiver. Then I will demo, live demo tomorrow for the PPP, Madoka PPP. That we can do. Okay. Okay. So next is, yeah, uh, what receiver used by the Docomo network? Actually, I can say, I can answer Sotobank. Sotobank network is, uh, Septentorio, base station is Septentorio, 3300. And uh, lower side is uh, U-Brox, F9B. So quite good. The Docomo network is, they have used to geostationary survey institute network, Geonet. Plus, I am not sure which receiver they used. So could we see, RG yeah, 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 you can use star server, STRSVR. So we, you will connect uh, the Noto PC to the, uh, Receiver, and uh, you just to start to start server, and uh, you can transmit collection data mm -hmm. to Ntrip. Ntrip. Yeah. Yeah. So the bank course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, I already answered. That's all, this Dear Sensei. Yeah. Maybe it's time to finish. Yeah. Yeah. OPM. Thank, thank you so much for joining. Yeah. Uh, my talk. Yeah. So Thank yeah, you this very session much. will be yes. continue. Will be continue. Please join. Please join. Keep join. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Kubo. We will move now to our next uh, topic: is the RTK data processing.
how to get the centimeter level accuracy, static and uh, dynamic data sets, and low cost and high end receiver data sets. So <clears throat> our speakers are from the University of Tokyo and TUMSAC. <clears throat> we will still have with us uh, Mr. Kubo. Um, Mr. Kayota Kobayashi will join him and Mr. Jize Jang as well. And Dinish uh, Manahander and uh, Mr. Avinap uh, will also complement this set of the presentation. So the floor is yours, please. Uh, so hello, hello everyone. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, okay. Yeah. So next session, I will uh, explain about the uh, RTK data processing and I will mainly introduce how to use RTK in real field. Uh, so my presentation target is GNSS user who wants to get precise position by RTK and I don't mention about difficult theory or scientific consideration of RTK. Uh, so uh, before start of presentation, so could you uh, download the data set for practice? So this three data set is uh, used uh, for uh, today's session. Mm. So Mr. Mr. Kaito. Yes. Mm. So le let me just make one announcement to the participants. So from now on, we are going to work with the software so Mr. Kaito, he will have uh, some uh, PowerPoint presentations, but also he will refer to the software and data and so on. So it will be a bit of a interactive session. It's not just a uh, presentation. So we'll have a, <coughs> a very interactive session from now on. And this uh, part we divided into two, part one and part two. So the first part will be done by Mr. Kaito and the second one by Mr. Uh, Ize. And so yesterday I already uh, requested you to download the software and install the software in the Windows computer. This is com compatible only with in, uh, Windows, not Linux or other things. So make sure that you have already the software installed in your computer and it's working. So we need for the part two as well. And also please make sure that you have downloaded the data sets, RTK data set 01 and 02 and also the static data, dynamic data from our previous uh, experiments, I mean the previous trainings, okay? Okay, so please uh, go ahead, so thank you, sorry. Uh, so data set is very good for, so in, as a zip and please and zip. So first the software is uh, this RPK lib. So please and zip, this one. Okay, and another data set to zero one and zero two is also uh, you should uh, unzip. It's okay. So this is the contents of my presentation. So first I will simply explain the overview of RTK. And second, I show the explain of RTK application in many, many fields. So this part is uh, some, some application is overlapped with, uh, overlapped with uh, a previous session. Uh, sorry for that. And third, I'll, I will explain specific method to build RTK environment. Uh, RTK uh, so RTK need to receive as one is called the base and one is called the lower. <coughs> so I will explain both uh, receiver configuration and uh, so real-time RTK setting. Yes, and fourth, I teach you how to record data and convert it to use for RTK post-processing. So this RTK post-processing is uh, uh, demonstrated by uh, Dr. Eats uh, after my presentation. Okay, so you should have understood about the uh, 
some type of GNSS positioning, and it is different in uh, yeah, it is different. Uh, but uh, let's review the overview of RTK. So RTK is a high precise centimeter level positioning uh, method using two receivers. One receiver is base base receiver, and uh, this is consisted by static antenna and receiver and broadcasting device. So another receiver is called ROBA. ROBA is the same as user's receiver who wants to know the position. So base station will broadcast our own observation data uh, through so internet or uh, some communication protocol. And ROBA receiver get this observation data from the base and it calculates RTK position of here. And this is sample of so RTK and RTK static position. So this blue shows SPP and the cyan indicates uh, s bus positioning and this small green uh, shows RTK positioning. So and apart from uh, normal RTK, there is another technique using RTK theory that is called moving base RTK. In moving base RTK, base station can move and it calculates relative position between two antenna of lower and base. The relative position seen from the base uh, base antenna is called baseline vector. So this baseline vector uh, indicates uh, the length and the uh, angle. Yes, angle. And the main application of this moving base RTK is the attitude sensor. So you can get attitude or a precise heading angle of a ship or aircraft or a car. So like this. Okay, let's see the field that RTK is used or expected to use. So GNSS is now become a social infrastructure because it is used in many fields. So navigation, automotive, uh, logistics, machine control, communication network, security, finance, IoT, and big data. So everyone in this class must have been used to GNSS in your life. So in this GNSS application fields, RTK can facilitate further GNSS application and the technology innovation. It will give us more smart driver and solve social issues. Okay. So first application I show is construction. So before construction, you need to uh, survey. So this is an image of a traditional uh, optical survey using total station. So you should install total station. Uh, this is a laser range finder and uh, at the known position and calculate a distance and the angle from the here. So this optical survey needs many time and cost and human resource. But if you apply the RTK survey to, uh, uh, to construction, uh, you can get accurate, accurate XYZ in construction field only by uh, this uh, pole and antenna. So below image is RTK on construction machine. So long time tra training and experience is required to control this complex construction machine. But if your machine position and attitude and maneuver are visualized on 3D geodata uh, precisely, precisely. Uh, so machine control become more easy and time effective will be increased. 
So next, I will show you the application or IPS. IPS. Uh, so traditional SPP is used for car navigation, but RPK enable more intelligent transportation system. So most famous one is self-driving car. And the self-driving car need many sensors to avoid accident or car maneuver control and the car absolute position on the road given by RPK is expected to support these sensors. And another application is load pricing. So load pricing by GNSS, a reliable, flexible system and low infrastructure cost. And if RPK was used on load pricing, so it is enabled to uh, recognize rain and uh, enable congestion charge by rain, even in our area. In maritime field, uh, so now both SPP and RPK is used. So SPP is used for normal navigation and RPK is used for seafloor survey or maritime construction and oil drilling. And moving base RPK is used as a GNSS compass. So this is a, a device to know ship heading and roll and pitch. So this is an image of a seafloor survey. If you want to make underwater map, you need to get accurate position of the sonar and the altitude of the ship. In maritime construction, there is no reference point like land survey. So working ship will do pile drilling uh, with RDK positioning. And now auto bashing of the ship using RDK is researched. So ship bashing need more delicate ship control. And if we challenge to auto bashing with unmanned ship, so centimeter level ship maneuver control will be required. Next application is UAV. The importance of UAVs in mapping is increasing, especially for effective construction management. So to make map by UAV, it needs photo taken by UAV and the position data of where uh, that photo was taken. So a few years ago, the position is calculated by SPP on UAV and uh, it has a position error. So we need to collect the coordinate on the map using known accurate position called GCP, ground control point. But if UAV can use RDK to record photo position, so map accuracy will be better than one by SPP, regardless without GCP. And also, if you apply the moving base RPK, you can so know the attitude of UAV. If UAV is tilted during taking a photo, so UAV position and uh, photo position, photo center position is don't match. But if you know the tilt angle, you can collect this bias. So next is agriculture field. So most of agriculture machine need to run farm without omission and overlap. So it is necessary to long time training or yeah, training to control this uh, agriculture machine. So and in Japan, so farmer population aging is a social problem and it needs to create a system that's Young people can drive agri machine with short time training. So agri machine guidance system is introduced to solve this issue. Uh, so farmers share RTK based station uh, built by Zenself or are using so VRS service, uh, they can get RTK position. 
and guide agri machine. So, okay, so why RTK is needed? So this is a uh, uh, machine. This is because, uh, uh, yes, so this is a compilation of SPP and RTK. And SPP has many errors, and it is hard to guide a green machine to straight line uh, using this SPP solution. So I have introduced some application of RTK, but uh, there are few of all RTK use case. And you can also invent a new RTK application. So next, around next, I will show how to build a RTK environment. And before that, I will answer two questions. Okay, so can I use RTK to perhaps collect ionospheric uh, pass point? So you can, if you know the uh, accurate position of the base station, uh, you can estimate ionospheric delay and the passing point. But in moving case, Maybe it is difficult, I think. Yes, because you know, speak delay is erased uh, between base and rover. Yes, okay. And next answer is can you please give some example of RTK application and the financial smart grid? Uh, so a financial smart grid is not RTK, only timing. So financial system uh, needs a time uh, very precise time synchronization. But this time synchronization is done by SPP, not RTK. And the smart grid is the same. So not RTK and only SPP can uh, provide the solution. So how about the PPP? Could it be used for autopiloting the drone? Uh, so PPP, yes. Uh, maybe it, it can uh, apply to UAV. Yes, but uh, there is uh, no so light, light and compact receiver that can uh, apply to UAV now. So in your force PPP, you said about moving the base. Can you please explain the difference between moving base and static base? Oh, yes. So normal RTK is a base station antenna is static, and the base station has an observation data, and this antenna position is transmitted to the rover. But in moving case, the, this is base antenna and this is rover antenna, and both uh, move to the same direction. And this uh, XYZ is unknown, and only calculate this vector. So this position is uh, not centimeter level, but only the, this vector length and the vector angle is precise. So this moving base is used for attitude sensor, not for positioning. Yes, okay. Yes, okay, so. So now, so may, maybe uh, many of you I uh, have a question, how should we use RDK for application development specifically? So I will explain specific usage of RDK receiver in the uh, next slide from, the, uh, from the this slide. So first you need to build RDK base station if there is no accessible base station in your field. So base station purpose is broadcasting observation data to RDK user. So here I will explain the way using Entry server. 
the famous and common way in key and se sector. So EndTrip is one of internet protocol, and if you have uh, internet access, you can get base station data from to wherever you are. So first we need to install base station GNSS antenna. So this is base station which is installed by Japanese government. This is a base station on the roof of our laboratory. So antenna is installed on known position and it is used for uh, so sorry, uh, yes, known position and Yes, um, cable connector part is waterproofed. And this is a temporary base station on the tripod. So temporary base station is uh, uh, used for short time experiment like UAV survey. To secure the tripod with uh, a rope to avoid antenna move or fall of tripod. So base station antenna should be installed in open sky environment. So this means there is no obstacle near the antenna that disturbs signal receiving. So next is receiver selection. The base station receiver must support low data output. So this low data means observation data of GNSS signal which include pseudo range, uh, carrier phase, and Doppler shift, and the signal to noise ratio. So RPCM3 output is recommended because this is uh, standard format for RPK. So, uh, stand, not the standard, but most popular in CNSS field. So RPCM3 has uh, many message type, but what message you should broadcast is depending on local receiver. So this is an example of RTCM3 message. So 1005 is reference antenna station position. And 1013 is Kronos observation data. So you can know what message is uh, what mean from this site. Yes, yes, SNP. SNP is the uh, Intrip uh, server provider. And in here, you can show, you can know what RTCM3 message type is, what mean. So, for example, MSM6, this is uh, for RTK use and through range. So, phase range, Doppler, CNR is high resolution. So mainly MSM4 or MSM7 is used now. Yes, on the receiver manufacturer format, uh, low data like UBX or SBF, so also included uh, these observation data. But you should check lower receiver, what message type is for it as a uh, collection data input format. So this is example for septentrial receiver. Uh, this septentrial receiver support only RTCM version 3, RTCM version 3, or CMR. CMR is a trim blue format. So if you uh, get the UBX format and the input to it, to the shifting territorial receiver, it does not work. So, after you install base station antenna and receiver, you need to set up receiver to output RTCM message. So, this method is different by receiver. So you should refer to instruction manual of the receiver. Uh, so now I will show the setting in UBlox receiver. So this is the UBlox receiver's uh, control window. 
and now the signal is coming from the rooftop. And low observation data is this one. But this is a U blocks format. So I need to uh, change to output RPCM for base station use. So I will change. So this key model is uh, our base disable is for lower mode and the fix mode is for base station mode and the input uh, last year long shoot are here of the so accurate base station position you need to input Now, what Kaito was showing us that uh, how to do the real time processing using the U blocks receiver. Okay, so yes, now he yes. input the base station coordinate data, latitude, longitude, and height. So please make sure that this data is correct. If you make a mistake, so probably you don't get the answer or you get a very wrong output. Yeah, please. Yes, and after input the base station position, so this fixed mode uh, become a time. So this time means a uh, base station mode. And next, I will change the port output message. So now the so USB, USB output and protocol out to RTC3. And now this receiver output on the RTC. So let's check. Yes, here. So this receiver sends the RTC. 1005 is the so reference station coordinate. And 1074 is the GPS observation. 1094 is the Galileo observation. 1124 is the build observation. Yes, uh, there is no uh, GLONASS, so I don't, I don't know. So, okay. Yes, and okay. So this is a uh, Example of the U blocks receiver configuration. Yes, next. So to do RTK, you need to know accurate base station. Ah, so that is uh, one I input. And so in real time RTK, this position information is broadcasted uh, to Rova uh, by RTC message. So in this case, 1005 uh, message includes the uh, uh, location of base station. So how can we get accurate base station antenna position? So there are several ways. So first is RTK with other base station. So get the data of nearest RDK base station and our base station data and then calculate uh, this uh, RDK solution by post processing. So there is uh, two type of reliable RDK base station. One is ICS station. So this is international GNS service. And the IGS station is established in global, but not dense. So next is the local call station. So for example, this link is for Thailand one. And so if your country government is uh, installing calls, and uh, if you can access that, you can use that 
uh, observation data for uh, calculate RDK position of your base station antenna. So if the nearest other base station is far over so 40 kilometer, that is the limit of RDK, so you should get antenna position by PPP, precise point position. So for PPP, you need Linux data file of your base station receiver. And there is two type of PPP method. So one is calculate yourself by free software, like RDK Lib or NetLib. So this software needs satellite orbit and clock collection data that you can download from IGS as an IGS product. So another is online PPP service like Trimble RDX or CSRS PPP. So you can visit this website and after registration and you can submit your Linux data. And then the PPP position result will be back on the website. Trimble RDX, CSRS, this is both free. And also you can use Madoka PPP to uh, calculate base station uh, accurate position. Yes, so this uh, right figure, right left figure is a PPP solution but net lift uh, with MGX collection data. So uh, standard deviation is under 10 cm and you can use average position of this solution for base station coordinate. So light uh, paper is a report from the Trimble RDX and you can see the calculated uh, precise, precise and accurate position of the submitted, submitted Linux data. Yes, so unless there is a special reason, I don't recommend to use uh, optical survey position or SPP average position for the base station position. So because the plate of us is moving and there is uh, probably the old local survey point coordinate doesn't match with one of now. And also the SPP average sometimes has a bias uh, from true position. So on this SPP result, there is a 5, yeah, 50 centimeter bias and the position bias in the base station will cause, cause lower RDK position bias. And we should avoid that base station position has a bias. So use the PPP is maybe most of uh, good way. Yeah, okay, so after configure base station receiver and uh, calculate base station location, location then uh, you can push collection data uh, via Enotrip. So now I will push my receiver data to free Android server. So you can see it. Yes, I disconnect. And to push collection data, I will use a star server. So on RTK Lib. So in here, uh, this uh, content is the UBlox receiver. Uh, that's out of the RTK 3 And this uh, RTK, I will use RTK to go uh, free and flip server and push to here, mount point ECJ 71. Start. And then after, we can check the front end trip browser of this icon. The enter RDK to go. As all parts into uh, 
uh, all participants can uh, do the same thing, uh, browse the uh, mount point. And maybe ECG71 is uh, appear. Uh, yes, this. This one is uh, my uh, mount, uh, new mount point. And we can get uh, this endotrip data. Uh, we get O. And user ID and password is uh, this is free, so they are blank. And start. So I can see. Uh, I can see the RTCM data from the U blocks receiver. You can also check in your laptop or your, your PC. Next, I will show the two examples of RTK lower setting. So one is RTK on U block receiver, and the second is RTK on RTK rib. Yes, so first I will show the uh, RTK on U block engine. So I will connect another antenna uh, and another antenna and another receiver. Yes, this COM3 is a new receiver for LOBA. And from this receiver menu and the Enotrip client setting, uh, input, so Enotrip mount point uh, detail, and select to mount point. And click OK, you can get the collection data from the Enflip server. <laughs> yes, OK, let's this Enflip client. The RTS is RTK2 now. Update so stable. And find the ECG seven one and OK. So now the receiver fix and the position position. So now the uh, very accurate uh, position is given by RDK. So let's check the collection data input. So you can see from this menu, this RTCM, you can see uh, RTCM 1005, 1074, 1094, 1124 is coming uh, via internet in trip. Yes, okay. Uh, this function, so in U-Blocks receiver, M8P and F9P supported. So on board RDK. Yes, okay. So next is the real time RDK uh, by RDK Lib. So we use RDK Navi uh, application uh, for real time positioning. So to use RDK Navi, first you need to set the receiver to output the raw data. And raw data means binary observation message includes RTCM. So RTK Navi decode this 
raw data and calculate RDK solution. So raw data format that RDK now be supported with this. So RDCM3 or other manufacturer original format. So I will show you the how to do this with uh, this receiver and uh, mount point ECJ71. OK, once, so disconnect. Ah, sorry, to disconnect. Ah, so Lower receiver, this lower receiver need to output uh, this row X. Row X is the uh, uh, pseudo range and carrier phase and Doppler, include Doppler and SNR. And SFRBX, this is ephemeris, ephemeris data. And we need to uh, output this message from the USB. So now USB, this receiver output, so UBX. Check packet. Ah, sorry, it's complicated. So the output is UBX. And now you can see the packet from the USB. So in this packet, uh, you need this RXM, SFRPX, this and RXM, row X, this is row, the observation data, RXGNSS, row measurement. So this two type of message is uh, required for R RTK on RTK Navi. This section save. And this is the description of how to connect a receiver by UBlox. UBlox U Center. So receiver is recognized as a USB CR device, in this case COM11, and from the select port and select COM11, and open message view of this configuration window. And this is a, a port from the uh, UBX CFG port. You need to out UBX format. And then, so enable output of X and SFRBX in UBX RXM uh, field. And after receiving the CBOX configuration was completed, uh, you need to save config from this menu. Yes, uh, next, uh, open RTK Navi from RTK Lib. So RTK Navi is this uh, six, uh, number six icon. And first set input story. So lower receiver is uh, come from the CL communication. And the format is a UBlox. So base station data is coming from the MDRIP client, and the format is RPCM3. So the detailed setting is here and here. So next, 
Uh, this icon O is the output stream setting. So save to file or transmit to by PCP or yes, uh, some option is available. And this L is a log stream. So this can log the input stream. So lower and base station. Normally it is used for logging the uh, raw data, uh, input raw data. So we need to uh, set in this option menu, we need to uh, set uh, various parameters for RQK, uh, but this uh, contents will be uh, explained in the next session. Okay, so I will show this one. Uh, so sorry, I forgot to how to launch this RDK lib. So click and open this RDK lib folder and in bin folder. And there is RDK launch.exe. Uh, please double click. Uh, you can open the, uh, open the main window of RPK Lib. Yes, RPK Lib, P34, Bing, and RPK Launch. Yes, okay, let's uh, start RPK Lab. Now input is a uh, here communication. Base station is electric. Uh, we set up so I'll be to go. And this format low by format is U blocks. Uh, base is RTCM3. Uh, now output is uh, now off. And the log is off. Okay. And in option. Uh, so in this detail option is uh, this, uh, explained next session. So I will skip the uh, detail explain. Now. And let's start. And both lower receiver signal and RTCM3 base station signal is coming. And now the uh, color this colored bar is the uh, ephemeris is uh, uh, decoded. And now solution is fixed. This fixed means uh, uh, ambiguity, integer ambiguity is uh, fixed. And the flow is, uh, signal is not fixed. And ambiguity resolution is not uh, converged. Yes, now the lower receiver signal is not so good. So this is a flow solution. But maybe it needs uh, some time and the conversions. Uh, 
uh, if you change some parameter, the fix uh, speed and uh, fix ratio will increase. So this uh, technique will be explained in uh, next session. Okay, now all fixed and in we can show Yes, this is one centimeter grid, and now uh, calculated on RTK Navi, very precise position. Yes, okay. So this is the way to real time RTK with RTK Navi. Yes, okay, next step, uh, we move to the how to do post processing of RTK. So, raw data, uh, so for post processing RTK, we need to get the raw data from the receiver. So most of the GNC receivers support serial communication to output raw data. So I will explain the way using uh, serial communication. So I think easy way to record the data on PC is using RTK lib. So don't forget to record both base station data and raw bar data. So from the receiver, raw data come and RTK lib strsvr uh, gets the data and create the file. Yes. Um, strsvr is the third icon of this RTK launch. And open here. And the input is here. And he selects the COM port of the UR receiver and the output is a file. So this file, uh, input the file pass uh, you, uh, you wish to save. So in this file pass file, file name, uh, you can use the uh, uh, keyword uh, repla replacement in file pass. This percent y in year, year, month, day, and our minutes a second will be automatically uh, automatically changed to file name. Yes. Let's do this recording. Let's uh, stop our DK now. Hit. Okay, uh, I open the STR SVR around uh, this sub icon and select I select it CR communication. See. And the output is file. This is saving to the uh, local PC. Yeah. This file is .ubx mean ublox binary format. And start. So the output stream from the receiver is recorded to file. Yes, here. So 21, 01, uh, today's date. 
and the time. Yes, you need to uh, record both. This is only uh, lower data, but you need to record uh, both base station and lower receiver. Yes, okay, so next is the data conversion. So this GNSS raw data like UBX is normally uh, original binary format by receiver manufacturer. So to use this raw data on third party RTK software like RTK Leap or also NetLeaf, we need to convert it to Linux format. So Linux format is the uh, most popular ASCII format to express GNSS observation data. So about uh, Linux format, please refer to IGS site. So RTK comp on RTK rib can convert several manufacturers receivers data. So this is original data and after uh, decode this, uh, the ASCII file was created. Yes, okay. RTK comb is the second icon on RTK lib. So open it. And in first column, so input, uh, the input uh, select uh, recorded GNSS raw data. And next, uh, select format. In this case, we use ublocks. And the two file is uh, created by Linux format. .obs is observation file, and .nub is the ephemeris file. Yes. Okay, so sample data is uh, uh, prepared in RTK data 01. And yes, okay, let's select the static data and there is a UBX file. If I be yes, static. So let's try using this file. Okay, click second icon, RDK comp. And to drag and drop this .ubx to here. So if you open this UBX, uh, you can open by uh, some, uh, some text editor, but this is a binary format. So, ASCII code. So this is the observation data, low observation data, but we can't read. Yes, okay. So drag and drop this to first column and the format, select format, UPX. Yes, okay. And next, uh, we set the option of the conver conversion. First, we select a uh, Linux version for 3.0, upper 3.02. So Linux version 2 is not supported, doesn't support uh, multi-GNSS. So upper Linux version 3 is recommended for multi-GNSS. Uh, signal uh, calculation. So next, uh, and I recommend to check this scan of type. So this scan of type means 
RTK Combo Automatic Ali Check What Signal is Included in the Raw Data. So L1, L2, or so L5. So next is the satellite selection. If you uncheck the, for example, uncheck Galileo, Galileo data was not output. So you can exclude the uh, satellite, satellite constellation, uh, which you, you don't uh, want to use. And next, this observation type is uh, she is code range and L is the carrier phase, uh, D is Doppler shift and S is SNR. Uh, we recommend check all. And next, frequency. This is the uh, frequency uh, of which uh, output to Linux. Uh, normally, we check all. Click option. And now RTK Lib version 34 supports the most newest version of Linux is 3.04. Okay, and ah, so new version, I don't have a scan of this type option. Oh, yes. And check all and check this one. It's OK. And click convert. Uh, something happened. Uh, so this F90 stick uh, caused some error in version 34. So version 33 of RDK lib, it can, uh, I can convert, but maybe some bug appear in version 34. So, uh, yes. Uh, maybe this is the bug of version 34, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but the conversion is uh, successful. Yes. Yes, maybe. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I will use the uh, uh, old version.
have a sp in uh, with b three three. Uh, it is no bug and it completes. Uh, 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 data decoding. And okay, if you uh, get some bug, bug error window, please uh, download version 3.3 and uh, test with that. So after conversion, you can find .obs file and .nav file. So this uh, file can open by this data. Yes. If we open this to this data, uh, you can find the ASCII. ASCII. Yes, this is GPS, uh, 12 satellite, and the code range, and the phase, uh, carrier phase, and Doppler shift, and SNR. And this is L1 signal, and the next column is L2 signal. And this is time, epoch, and the next epoch is from here to here. Yes. And the ephemeris file is .nav, so this is uh, describes the satellite orbit parameter of all satellite. So if you search uh, Linux format in Google, uh, you can find what uh, what the means of this value. Okay. And you can also check this Linux format data graphically by RPK plot. So after convert data and click this plot. Yes, this is a list of the satellite observed. And select L1, you can find only L1, L1 observation. And this color uh, indicates the SNR. If the signal quality is good, uh, this is green. And the quality is bad, is it purple or blue or red? And you can uh, sort the satellite constellation like this. And in sky plot, uh, you can plot the uh, satellite uh, in sky. And you can change the time in this slide bar. If you uh, show all, uh, you can uh, find uh, there are many satellites uh, you can visible uh, with multi GNSS. And what, how about the number of GNSS? Uh, this top and inset. Uh, 
Ah, this is over Saturday. Over Saturday and upper Saturday, uh, this graph can't uh, plot. Yes, and this is annual and uh, Maritas, uh, we can plot. All the satellites that we can know. So G07. Yes, oh, it's a G10 satellite. So the G10 satellite, SNR, so this is static uh, on, on, on roof antenna. The SNR is very good. And the marriage pass is very low. And the elevation is are uh, changed by satellite moving. Uh, if you use a uh, uh, dynamic data, how about this? Yeah, let's check. RDK comp and move to this dynamic data and m 8 t rover and drag and drop this one and convert. Yes, and after convert, plot. Uh, this uh, car data is uh, uh, the, uh, this dynamic data is uh, uh, recorded on car antenna. So the signal quality is uh, not good uh, than static antenna. So yeah, many jump, jump and cycle slip is happened. Let's show SNR and the multi pass. Yes, so SNR is uh, become low when the uh, car uh, car run uh, besides the uh, high rise building or some uh, tree or some objectives. And so this is only L1 signal is recorded, the multiple can't uh, calculate because two uh, current estimate marriage pass uh, we need to do the frequency. And this uh, MHP uh, data MHP only support uh, receiving L1 signal. So we can't estimate this marriage pass. Yes, F9P data can estimate the marriage pass because it uh, receives dual frequency. Okay. Yes, so other useful link is here. And now uh, my part is end completed. So I will answer the question. Okay, first question. So thank you, Kobay san. So yes. 
this is, I think, very, very, I mean, important uh, exercise. You made a demo. Uh, I think for <laughs> many of us, it's a bit fast, but uh, don't worry. We have uh, this recording and you will get this video later after ICZ does some uh, editing and they publish, so it will be available. So please do uh, look at the video and try yourself. But uh, the best thing is uh, you should try the article leaf on your own computer with the sample data that are provided to you. So just play with the data. Okay? So that's how you will get used to it. And probably some of you already using article leaf uh, or U blocks. So just to summarize what he did now is uh, he showed the demo for using the real-time RTK in the real-time using the U-blocks. And also he made a demo for uh, using the RTK leave. Okay? So two parts for real-time and also he did the post-processing in the RTK leave. And so he will answer the questions and after that we'll have a break and then after the break, then we'll have again very detailed, probably uh, slower this uh, data processing exercise uh, from Dr. EJ. OK, so please. Uh, so may I request now Mr. Kaito uh, to yes. okay. answer some of the questions? Uh, so how do the Internet to server data is valid? So this means. So, so we, we when have uh, internet access is uh, uh, you can access the internet anywhere is valid. But uh, so this baseline is uh, depending on the receiver. Yes, receiver and the RTK software. And what is the uh, URL recommendation is using UHF Brazil and the internet connection in RTK connection. So if you can use the uh, uh, internet, internet is uh, uh, well because the uh, uh, bandwidth and the data rate is uh, higher than UHF. But if you don't have uh, any so internet uh, 3G or 4G uh, network, uh, you can use UHF like uh, GB, GB 900 megahertz or low, low, yes, and VHF, VHF maybe 400 megahertz or that can reach uh, 10 kilometer, yes, 10 kilometer what? Mm. Uh, under 10 kilometer you yeah. can use. So it's a maximum of 50 is line in it or Yes, so ionospheric effect uh, in this ambiguity resolution. So it depends on the RTK engine and the ionospheric uh, condition. So, for example, U block receiver says not support uh, 50 km, it support until 30 km in official document. And the septentrio officially says 40 km. And yes, and RTK, RTK rig, it can. Yes, RTK rig, uh, there is no limitation of the baseline, but I don't know uh, it become fixed or broke. I think this is related with some uh, receiver brand, so sorry that we don't have any don't know, merit or dismerit of another brand, so we cannot, uh, we, we don't know, we have never used it, so we, we don't have any experience on that. Active in India now. <laughs> so sorry, I don't so, know <laughs> the status of the. I the think the guy who is India. asking from India, so he should know better than us. We we, don't, we have no idea. 
Uh, yes, I think I can have an uh, yeah. answer. Uh, yeah, if you look up the IGS website, and uh, you can see the IGS stations, and uh, I think uh, at least two IGS stations um, provide GNSS data. But this in, maybe it's India? not. Uh, yes, India. Yeah, but it may yes. not be working all the time. Uh, you can get a uh, post for post processing. Mm -hmm. You can get a uh, Linux data. Mm. Yeah. So thanks, EJ. Yes, thank you. So next, I can't see the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, please uh, restart your computer. Ah, okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's fixed. Yes. It's a process. Uh, what, what, what process? Sorry, please, uh, one more in chat. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, no, he, he was so. asking that uh, when you made some commands or some process in the article leaf, so he just wants you to repeat it, so, but it's already done. So please watch the video later. Yes, okay, next, okay. how many so next question. The latency time. Uh, so, in, in Trip, there is no late, uh, very few low latency. So if we use a uh, 4G, 4G in Japan, the latency is under one second. Mm -hmm. Yes, but if we use a uh, slow internet network, uh, the latency become big. But the latency it is is uh, uh, permitted until uh, 60 second is enough. 60, 60. Yeah, 60, 60 seconds. Okay, 60, uh, under 60, 60 seconds. Second age right. latency. It's okay. supported in most uh -huh. receiver. Okay, good, good to know that. Okay. Hi, can we have a video? Yes, maybe you can watch the video. Uh, yes. From this rtklib.com and in GitHub, I will show. ISP Maybe B33 is. Uh, I think deleted. Hmm. Now we only. But, uh, but I think I think B34 should work as well. Maybe uh, when we cut, but maybe I don't know. It may be due to the some uh, new signals in the Rhinix or some other sentences included. Mm, so I, I don't know how, mm. why, why is the bug happening. Mm, yeah, that uh, I think we will check later. Game. So yes. I think we better use a uh, version 34 because there are also other things that the, the reason why we needed uh, version 34. I mean, B34. Yes, I so is it? Do you have any comments on that? Uh, the, the reason uh, why there's an error at, at this moment, or we need to look at the, this Rhinox data? Uh, I think uh, we should uh, check the source code with okay. this data. Okay. But okay, so it's true that we should use uh, the newest version yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah. Article have improved at some yeah. other specs. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that we'll check at our site for the bugs. Okay. Okay. Well, any other question? Yeah, so how can we extract the carrier base or Doppler? To see the data, if we want to do what's analyzed using MATLAB or other software. Ah, okay. So he yes. wants to do in MATLAB. Okay. Yes. So you can uh, check the uh, so carrier base and Doppler in light next file and you can mm. extract from this uh, two column you can use mm. yes 
So please check the Rhinex document format. Okay. So it's already there code uh, phase data, code, code, code data, phase data, and Doppler, SNR, whatever you require. So it's already available, and you can use MATLAB to read the data. Could we use RTK lib as an NP caster? So NP caster. So I, I have shown by SPR SPR. Uh, you can push from the here to a uh, server. We say NP caster mm. caster caster NP caster. Yeah. NP caster what? So you can push the data by star server. What you block series was used for the demo? Yes, F90. You block uh, F90 dual frequency receiver is used. Coordinate for the base station from the optical survey. Yes. Yes, because in optical survey, so many country is surveying the uh, local position, local position with the uh, any uh, so any ma ma marker marker on the ground, and uh, that survey result is uh, uh, you can find in official document of the National Geo uh, Geo Organization. Uh, but it is a uh, old uh, mainly that's uh, not uh, updated every year. So that position is a uh, uh, position of all 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 position. So when the plate are uh, moving, that position uh, would need to become a uh, change. So you should so so that means uh, I recommend not to recommend to use a uh, uh, marker position that is uh, uh, surveyed by by traditional survey yes, okay what is the maximum baseline length in processing using rtk lib for stop logic so rtk lib there is no limitation about baseline uh, in my experiments, over uh, 30 kilometers, it not be fixed. But it depends on the uh, tropospheric or ionospheric condition. And the receiver frequency, dual frequency or single frequency. Yesterday, I tried to process of data in PPP mode. Don't work as well in the version. And the error in Japanese, yes. so cannot understand. <laughs> so please send the screen copy of that error. And if possible, can you? It's better if you can also send uh, your setting file, so we can duplicate the same here. Ah uh, yes. So next uh, session by is uh, mm. that's include maybe PPP. Uh, calculation mm. and you can find the uh, option and try again. Okay, Could we use what uh, this station you think? Uh, yes, RTK lib can uh, support uh, multiple uh, base station, but uh, one one is one star server uh, support uh, only one base station, so you need to uh, open multi window. Okay. 
Okay, so okay, so we take one more question. So can you answer what is the difference between instantaneous? And after this question, we'll go to for we'll go for a break. So Kaito san. Ah uh, yes, so instantaneous is, yes. is uh, each in, in instantaneous mode the RTK lib calculates the uh, integer ambiguity in each epoch. But the continuous board, RDK use uh, a Kalman filter and uh, a conver convergence uh, integer ambiguity. And mm. so use uh, a several epochs data. So in open sky condition, continuous mode is uh, better than instantaneous. Mm. Okay, thank you. So, okay, so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kaito. So at this point, I would like to have a break. So we'll stop here for another. So Shafa and Patrick, so what time shall we come back? So I would like to give a little bit of rest to our presenters and also they will check some of these, uh, some errors there. Yeah. So we are now is uh, past 30, 32. Yeah, why not so we have our a local half an hour? Time is, yeah. So, yeah. So we will come back. So our Japan time is now 5.32. So we will start at uh, 6.10, okay? So yeah, please give us about 30, 30, 40 minutes of time just to take a rest. And so we will start at uh, 6.10. 10 our time that means after 40 minutes okay. hello everyone we we resume our second part of today's uh, training dinish would you like yeah. to yeah. to to continue with yes with your group for our second part continue the yes uh, the rtk data processing mm -hmm. yeah so it will be the same team um at at the um, tumsat and the university of tokyo yeah Please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you so now from now on we are going to do rtk leave exercise with the sample data that were already provided to you. So if possible, please try to do the exercise at your computer, in your computer as well. Uh, I don't know how, whether we can keep the pace or not, but anyway, Dr. EJ, he will try his best to explain. So Dr. EJ, is it okay? Are you ready? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, uh, I please. Yeah, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Hello everyone. Thank you. Uh, I think, you can see my slides and hear my voice. So yeah. I'm going to start yeah. from uh, articulated processing. And then this is part two. Uh, and it's a exam from Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology. So during this part, we mainly focus on the articulated processing because in the previous part, uh, uh, Kobayas, he also introduced some uh, information or knowledge about RTK. And, uh, but this part, we only focus on data processing. So you should have the data and uh, uh, we provide it and also these uh, slides so that you can follow us with, uh, on your own computer. So uh, before this section, I think you have some, uh, you have these uh, themes. First, uh, you have some basic knowledge of RTK and also GNSS. I think uh, yesterday and today, uh, we have uh, no the introduce, introduction of GNSS and the RTK, or maybe some of you have already know the GNSS and RTK before this webinar. 
And the second one is that you have installed uh, or download articlib from this website or GitHub. I think all of you have done this. And the third one is you have download the GNSS data we provide. And uh, during this um, part, we are we mainly use the RTK data two. I think we have one and two. So in this part, we only use two. And if you have uh, extra time, you can try the data one because uh, data two is uh, smaller, so we can process the RTK uh, much faster to save time. And uh, during this uh, this course, we will do these themes. First is we are going to share how to perform RTK process post processing using RTK lib. And the list part not only includes RTK but also uh, some basic processing of SPP and the GNSS in RTK lib. And then we will process uh, RTK using RTK lead with the data we provide. I will perform a show list demonstration on my computer and uh, I will slowly to um, process this data. And the last, um, you will do a similar thing with this data by yourself on your own computer and uh, you need to check because we have provided uh, many different data from low cost receiver to high end receiver and also static and kinematic data so that you can try RTK with RTK lib uh, with these different data and check uh, what affects the precision of the performance of RTK. So first we should again uh, introduce the basic uh, structure of RTK lib. Uh, you can download from the website and uh, when you have uh, unzip this uh, RTK lib, you can see uh, a bin. I think this is a folder, and uh, we in this part we mainly uh, use articlelib under this directory, and uh, the other parts are uh, like the source codes or some uh, libraries if you want to go further with articlelib. So under this bin, it uh, executes. Uh, version of articlelib so you can process articlelib very easily. So this is the some files under this bin directory and uh, in this course we use the newest version of b34. This is maybe I think maybe just release uh, at this month maybe so it's the newest version and uh, in the previous uh, section, we have uh, uh, occurred some errors when using RTK convert. But during RTK post processing, using RTK post, I think this version is better because it fixed some bug with the India's INSS or NAVIC system. So if your data includes the NAVIC observation data, using this version, there's no bug. But maybe using the previous version, that occurs the bugs. Uh, I think in the previous uh, chat, some guys are also uh, uh, asked that he has some error when processing PPP, but I'm not sure whether it's this problem. And uh, if you are not using the newest version, you can try that to check if the same error occur. So 
if we double click this article launch, we can see this uh, similar uh, figure on the right and the list uh, different uh, GUIs of RTK lib. And uh, in this part, we mainly use the RTK post. So, okay, uh, this RTK post. So, RTK lib actually provides many different GUIs. These are some um, examples of these different GUIs. I think in the previous uh, lecture, we have uh, see the STR, SVR, uh, RTK plot, and the RTK navy, and the RTK convert to convert from other binary data to the Linux data. And uh, in this uh, part, we are going to use this RTK post. This is what we are going to use. So if you want to know uh, the details or the algorithm of RTK lib, then you can check this RTK user manual. Uh, in the document, I think under the document directory, so you can check the how to use uh, different GUIs and also the algorithm of RTK lib. So in this part, we will use the RTK post. Uh, you can just uh, open with this uh, icon or use the right figure on this RTK post. So once you open it, uh, okay, sorry. So before we start the data processing, I think you have already have this uh, data we have provided. So these are uh, different observation files. I will explain that in later. And uh, what I should uh, uh, comment is that the, this uh, base coordinate, uh, maybe it's not very precise. So uh, we have the reference or the base station coordinate on the website uh, which uh, Dr. Dinesh have provided, so we can use that uh, base coordinate. And uh, the data we have is uh, contains these different parts. The first one is the base station. Uh, we provide these different uh, data. One is the high-end receiver. This uh, name of this file is like this. Uh, start with base. And another one is a uh, low cost receiver. It's also start with base, but uh, and with this UBX, this is a uh, uh, low cost uh, data from UBlox. And uh, these two data are uh, static data, uh, which is obtained from our uh, university on the rooftop. And uh, another one is the rover station, uh, which is the kinematic data. It's obtained from a moving car. And uh, it also includes two kinds of data. One is the high-end from high-end receiver, uh, which names start from rover. And uh, another one is also from Ublox, but uh, uh, it's uh, also uh, named from start from Lova and uh, and with UBX. So I think you already have these four files. And uh, actually another one is the navigation data, which is the base dot uh, NAV. I think this is the navigation data, and uh, this navigation data is because it's the uh, information of satellite. So it's same for all data. So we just use one uh, file of navigation data, which is from the base station. 
So these are all the data we have. Okay. So uh, once we have this data, we can use the RTK lib and the mainly RTK post to perform SPP, DGNSS, and uh, the most important part, RTK. So uh, I will first I will introduce uh, use slides to how to use RTK lib to do these different positioning modes. And uh, if you open the uh, RTK lib or uh, RTK post, you can see this uh, figure like this, and it's uh, empty, uh, initialized as empty. And uh, if we we are going to process SPP, which is a single point positioning with only one station, so uh it's like this and uh, actually the default uh processing modes of article is spp so uh, all we need to do is just uh to add the data to this um here and uh, you can see from these uh, slides it, and uh, for the settings of SPP, you can click these options to change the settings of uh, SPP or the foreign DGNSS. So it's like this, but I'm going to uh, process the data uh, using my own RTK post on my computer. So I'm going to start with this. I hope you can see this RTK deep. This is the newest version. So uh, we can click here, RTK post. Okay, so uh, we have this, but actually if we start from, uh, if you download and uh, it's like this, it's all empty. And uh, actually here it's also empty. Uh, so to process SPP, uh, we can, okay, I will do SPP on my computer like this. So first, we can have this, um, for example, uh, we have this uh, U-Box of the base station. We drag the data to this Rhinox observation. And this is for the lower station, for the st data you are going to process. And uh, we also have the, this file navigation data and uh, you can drag to here. This is for the uh, Rhinox navigation data or other SP3 or clock. This is for uh, PPP processing. And uh, this is just these two files. And uh, for another part is the option. So we click this option. You can see these are uh, default settings of uh, RTK lib. It's, for example, the default setting is single. Single means the SPP mode, but there are many other different modes. Uh, we are not going to explain all the meaning of these different modes. You can check on the user manual, uh, but today we are going only going to introduce a single and the DGNSS and the kinematic these three modes. So actually the default mode is single, so we don't need to change anything. And uh, you can see this uh, gray means uh, it's nothing to do with this mode. 
so we don't need to care. And uh, the default um, setting of this elevation mask is 50. And you can also change the elevation mask uh, if you are going to try uh, to compare the results. And the list um, the default setting for single uh, for SPP uh, because we use the navigation file. So this satellite ephemeris and clock is broadcast. Uh, and uh, Another one we should be um, careful is that the default setting of the GNSS system is GPS, but currently we have multi GNSS system. So actually, we have, uh, for example, we have Galileo, we have uh, QCSS, we have BDS, or maybe even Navic. Uh, so we can uh, use other GNSS systems to uh, get a better SPP result. So this is the setting one. And uh, if you uh, come back to these settings, I have list some, uh, how to say, some important settings where we are going to uh, change in SPP mode. And uh, you can see here that it's the GNSS system. Usually we use different GNSS system, not only GPS. And uh, another part is the output because this is quite small. I will uh, conduct on my uh, article post. You can see that. And uh, as for this panel, uh, setting two, because this setting two is uh, related to the uh, at the case, so we don't need to change uh, any uh, values or settings. And the least part is the output. Output is the uh, format of our output file. Uh, for example, here the default output is expressed in latitude, longitude, and height. And uh, we can also change to other forms like XYZ in ECAEF. And uh, if you have a base station, we, you can also express e ENU. This is usually used for the uh, moving baseline. And uh, also in mail format, I think uh, Dr. Dinesh have also introduced this format. So we just keep and the default uh, setting, latitude, longitude. So these are different. And uh, for example, this is the format of your uh, output uh, time. These are default settings. We just keep as default. So if you want to uh, change, you can check this detailed information and uh, try it. But actually, this is just uh, um, output, so it doesn't affect the real position. And another one is the statistics. And because we are using uh, SPV mode, so this part is not related to the carrier phase. We just use the code observation. So in here, you need only to concern about these codes uh, and the phase ratio. This is, uh, how to say, uh, because we don't use carrier phase, so uh, we can also ignore this in SPP mode. And another one is the uh, elevation dependent uh, model. So this is, uh, I will not explain this because you can check in the user venue and it's a little complicated to explain. Um, but uh, it just means our uh, weight or the stochastic, uh, stochastic 
uh, model of your observations. And uh, this part is for RTK on PPP. We can ignore this. And the position, as for the position, it because we are using SPP mode, so it's all gray, so we don't need to change anything. And uh, the other part, it's for, for example, this is for PPP, so we also don't need to uh, concern about the settings. So for SPP, it's quite simple, and uh, we can see from this, um, see from here that uh, usually all we need to change is the GNS system we are going to use. And uh, the other uh, settings, we can keep them as the default setting. So this is the SPP uh, setting of SPP. And uh, so uh, when we click, uh, when we click OK here, OK on this, uh, on here, so we will come back to the main GUI of RTK post. And uh, so now we have, um, we have uh, input the observation data, the navigation data, and also we have uh, set the settings. So we can just uh, execute I'm not sure whether you can see this, uh, but I will use this. So once we have uh, checked the GNS system, we can check OK. So OK. Then we just uh, click the Execute. So let's see what will happen. OK, so it's uh, when you see this time, it means the processing is finished. It's quite fast because uh, we only provide uh, maybe half an hour's data. So it's quite fast to processing this data using the SPP mode. So after we finish processing, uh, finish the execute, then we can check the results with this plot menu. So if we click this plot, OK, we can find the result is like this. A result is like this. Um, so if we like this, uh, you can see that it's not on the center of this uh, axis uh, because I previously I have set this coordinate the reference coordinate or the coordinate origin at here because this is our uh, our base station's true coordinate. So it's uh, uh, we have provided this coordinate. So I've just set this value to check uh, the files of this SPP processing, and uh, I also turn on this show statistic to on because the default is off. So you can also try on your computer to change it to on, then OK. So it's like this. The scatter of these points are not at the center of this axis. Uh, this center is the, means the true coordinate. So you can see that's a bias of this SPP mode. And uh, on the left, on the top of the left, you can see the statistical results of this uh, positioning result. And uh, if we change this, this is the ground check or the horizontal error. And uh, if we change it to this position, so now it shows in the ENU direction of each uh, direction. So we can see the error 
and the uh, first is the average error and the uh, std standard deviation ms root mean square error you can see that so the uh, average we can see a bias about uh, four meters on the uh, u direction so this is the performance of this data okay so this is uh, uh, SPP mode. I think it's quite uh, easy to use because we don't need to change many uh, options. OK, so this is the setting of uh, SPP and the processing of SPP results. You can see this. So uh, this is, uh, I think this is uh, another data using the uh, net and uh, night, it's like this. And uh, actually, here I process with the UBX data, so it's somehow uh, different. So, okay. And uh, another, you can find this small uh, tool. Actually, I already uh, used this and. Uh, here, uh, when you use RTK plot, uh, you can check here, and there are many, so many options you can check it by yourself. But uh, I think the most important one is this show statistics. We can turn it to on. Okay. So this is the result of this base net analysis data. It's like this. So, and uh, we have a conclusion that the MS is uh, several meters and uh, less a bias of this data. So, uh, this bias is very normal because the accuracy from the navigation data. And uh, we just use uh, about half an hour's data. So, I think in this SPP mode, you can also try about other data. And uh, uh, what I'm sh show just now is the low cost receiver. And you can also try the net and night. It's your, that's your result like this, you can compare. And also, we have provided the kinematic data. So you can also try with that data. Uh, and uh, uh, because we also, uh, we have checked the GPS, Galileo, BDS, and uh, QCSS. And how about other GNS system? For example, if we only use GPS, and then what's the difference of the only GPS and the multi GNS result. So you can compare this uh, the performance. And uh, if we also change the elevation mask, because the default is value is 15. So if you change to 10 or 20, what's the difference of the result? So you can try it by yourself uh, at when uh, we finish this introduction and uh, when you try it uh, using your own uh, on your own computer. So this is the SPP mode. And the next I'm going to introduce the DGNSS processing. So uh, DGNSS uh, differs from SPP is that we use the base station. Uh, this base station is to eliminate the errors from satellites and uh, from the uh, atmosphere like troposphere and uh, ionosphere delay. This uh, DGNSS from SPB is that we need a base station. So the base station, the input of this base station is shown here. Uh, actually, it's gray when we use in SPB mode. So uh, first we need to change to DGNSS mode. And uh, what we need to do is 
uh, also again we click this option and uh, we change this single to DZNSS. So as for other settings on this options panel, we can just keep uh, same as the SPP mode. So this is what we only need to do in the options setting. And uh, after that, we again, we drag the observation data and the navigation data in here. And uh, the observation data includes the rover station and the base station. And uh, we should keep in mind that this base station is should be here. Linux Ops base station. So please don't mix it. Um, and uh, we also drag the navigation file to here, similar as the SPP mode. Uh, but another thing is usually uh, uh, many people will forget it's that uh, at least time we should also again to click the options to change uh, to input the coordinate of the base station. So it's like this. Uh, we are we already changed the position mode to DTNSS. And another uh, very important part is we should input the coordinate of our base station. So this coordinate is uh, what we uh, provided on the data. So this is very important. So I think some of you will also forget to set this. So uh, remember to set the base uh, coordinate of the base station. So now I'm going to use my own uh, a ticket post to check this data. So first, as we introduced, we change this option from single to the GPS or DGNSS. Otherwise, we cannot input the file of the base station. So I change this and I click OK. And then now I think maybe in your computer or your own version of the article post this part is empty so all we need to do is to drag the base station of uh, okay i use the static data but you can try the kinematic data later so here i use the UBX as the lower station and uh, the base station is from the net ni data and the others are the same. And the next, please don't forget to set the coordinate of the reference station. So here, because I have tried this um, before this uh, lecture, so I already input this coordinate. But maybe on your version of on your uh, desktop, maybe here it's empty, so you should input the coordinate. And uh, here the coordinate is expressed in latitude, longitude, and height. And we can also uh, change to ECF XYZ, and then we need to uh, input the XYZ. And uh, here it's expressed in XYZ. So it depends on the format of your base station coordinate. And then we, we click OK. So these are uh, all the settings of DZNSS uh, very similar to SPP. So now we will do the similar thing. We just click Execute. OK. Uh, I will use this, change the name of this TGN. OK. 
Okay. So this Q equals four means it's in the DGNSS mode. And uh, we can see this is the result of our uh, processing. And uh, if you check your on your computer, it's like this here. And uh, we can see that here it's the result of the previous SPP. And uh, here it's the DGNSS result. And uh, they are both in the post format. And uh, if we open this, we can see it's like this and expressed in latitude longitude format. You can also change to ECF format. It's like this. So again, we check the results in RTK plot. So we just click the plot. Oh, it's like this. And uh, because here I'm also going to compare the results of SPP and the DGNSS. So what we are going to do is that if you check the article post um, here, I hope you can see this. And uh, here it's figure one. And uh, if you click two and uh, again click this one, so we drag this SPP result we previously get and uh, drag to here. OK. And uh, because these are the same results of UBX observation file, but it's in SPP and uh, DGNSS mode. So we want to check the difference. And uh, here we again we click this one. So you can see because this region is the true coordinate. So obviously you can see that the DGNSS result is much close to zero. And uh, which means the bias of this SPP is um, somehow removed and uh, uh, also the accuracy of this DGNSS is uh, uh, a little smaller than the SPP mode of this uh, red point. So this is the benefit of DGNSS because it removes the errors from satellites and the atmosphere. So there will be not so large bias for the DGNSS mode. So it's like this. And uh, when we go back to here, so it's the similar uh, result like this. So this is SPP and the DGNSS uh, in blue. So we can see that the benefit of the DGNSS is we can remove some bias. Uh, from SPP. And also the accuracy is uh, standard deviation is also smaller than SPP. So when you process in the DGNSS mode similar to SPP, you can try a uh, high-end receiver. Uh, and also you can try the kinematic data because we have provided this and check the difference of SPP and the DGNSS when using this kinematic data. And you can also to uh, choose different DGNSS uh, system to check the difference. So you can try uh, check this uh, on your own computer and uh, uh, to check if you have any uh, findings or any questions. So until now, we have introduced SPP and the DGNSS. It's uh, quite easy 
to process using Aztec Day Post. So next, we are going to focus on the ATK processing. So this is the main part, actually. So the ATK is uh, somehow similar to DGNSS in theory, but uh, RTK also use the carrier phase observation so that we can fix the ambiguity. So, but for the settings on the main uh, GUI, it's uh, also similar to DGNSS. Uh, we also need a base station. So, uh, again, we click these options and uh, we change the uh, positioning mode from uh, DGNSS to this kinematic mode, which is, I uh, mean, the kinematic uh, RTK mode. And uh, we can also see that the static, this is the static RTK mode. But here we usually use the kinematic mode. So it's like this. This is the uh, uh, positioning mode from DGNSS to RTK. And uh, we should also input the same data, which is uh, similar to DGNSS, which includes the files from our lower station and the base station, and also the navigation file here. This is totally same as the DGNSS mode. And, uh, but the most important part is the options setting of RTK. So uh, we click these options here. And uh, OK, so these are some uh, important settings of RTK. So we already have changed this positioning mode to kinematic. And uh, if we check this setting two, now it's not uh, gray, and uh, we can select some of the uh, options and change some settings. So um, I will explain this using uh, real data. OK, now we are going to process RTK. So we have this option and the setting we change from DGNSS to kinematic, which means the RTK. OK, and uh, we because we have the uh, same data to uh, try this RTK mode. So we use the kin uh, static data, which uh, from uh, UBX and uh, net NetRNI. So here we didn't change uh, the data and uh, the navigation file. And uh, we need to change some settings. Um, for example, uh, in the setting two, uh, here first one is the continuous, I think in the previous uh, section, some people ask what's the difference of continuous and instantaneous mode. So uh, I think the Kobayashi have already explained the difference, so I'm not going to explain it again. And the default setting of this uh, RTK lib is continuous mode. So firstly, we use this default setting. And uh, the other part, uh, we didn't want to change the settings here. But when you are processing by yourself, you can change these settings. But because there are so many options, um, so it takes time to explain each uh, meaning of these each option and again i'm 
suggest to refer to the user manual of this at uh, lib. Uh, but we can just keep as default for our first processing. So I just keep it as continuous mode. And as for the output part, uh, we don't need to change the output format. And uh, here uh, I should explain uh, the option of this one. A ratio of codes and the carrier face on L1 and the L2. And uh, we can see that default setting of articulate is 100, which means the uh, uh, ratio of codes and carrier face is 100 uh, with 1. But sometimes, when especially when we are processing the kinematic data, because the code observation has larger um, errors that from multipass or something else. So we can change to, for example, 300 or 400 to uh, decrease the effect from uh, code observation. So you can try this when you are processing with the kinematic data. So uh, here we just keep as default setting. And again, we should remember to set the coordinate of this space station like this, same as DGNSS. So, okay, these are all the settings we are going to change. So, I will click OK and save the settings. And now we can click the execute to process uh, in ATK mode. So I will change this. Execute. So you can see that this flag of Q is one, which means it's uh, fixed. The ambiguity is fixed. So here I'm going to also going to compare the results of this. Um, uh, this red one is SPP and the blue one it's the GNSS. So I'm going to compare the RTK result with DZNSS result. So, uh, okay. okay. So you can see that you have uh, RTK results here. We drag to here. So this is the RTK results, and uh, we also open oh. so you can see the difference of DGNSS and the RTK mode so this um, uh, blue points are DGNSS result and uh, this very small it's uh, RTK result so now you can see the difference of DGNSS and uh, RTK like this and uh, if we change to position so you can see here it's almost close to zero because our list to receiver is very close so it almost el eliminates all the other errors except for the observation uh, noise so if we only check the errors of RTK results. So you can see it's very small, better than one centimeter. Yes, better than one centimeter. 
because these two stations are uh, very close, so the performance is very good and it's a static data and uh, observation environment is also very good. So this is the result of RTK. You can try with this static data on your own computer. And uh, next, I'm going to continue with these slides. So we have uh, to this similar thing like this. And uh, we can see that uh, fixed rate. And if you check here, I'm not OK, if you check here, the Q equals one. Uh, it's 100 percent, which means the fixed rate is 100, which means all the points are fixed and uh, the precision is within two millimeter. Yes, within two millimeter because this is a uh, zero base line. So the performance is very good. It's like this for the static mode. But if we use the kinematic data, kinematic data as we have provided, and uh, if we change this data of the lower station to the uh, kinematic data, which starts from the uh, uh, lower, and uh, we just keep the same settings and then uh, click Execute. So, what will happen? Like this on this guys, and I will also uh, test this with the real data of RTK post. Okay. So we have the kinematic data uh, like this. This is the lower from uh, net RNI and the lower from UBX. So first we try the net RNI. We just drag to here, uh, which means the lower station, and uh, we keep other settings same as the with the kinematic uh, static data. And uh, now we execute. Let's check the result. So you can see that here the Q now it's not always one, sometimes it's two. So two means it's float solution. And even sometimes is uh, we can see zero. Zero means there's no solution because maybe we have too few satellites on some epoch. So it takes a little longer than the static data. So now we have finished the processing. Now let's check the results. We uh, click this plot. Okay. It's like this. It's like this. So you can see here, and uh, we can see that the Q equals one, the rate is about 50%, which means only half of uh, results are fixed and the others are float. And also you can see here, it's there's no solution because uh, at here the car is under a uh, highway, so there's no observation data. So this is the performance of the kinematic data. So you can see it's only 50%, uh, not 100. It's much worse than the static data. But uh, so we change. Uh, so the default setting of the data we process is we use the continuous mode, continuous mode. And now 
we are going to use change this continuous mode to the instantaneous. So all we need to do is change here, continuous to instantaneous. And uh, then we uh, didn't change anything else. And uh, we process the data again. And actually here I show the result. Uh, but I'm also going to try with real data. So in this option, we change the setting from continuous to instantaneous. Let's see what results we can get. And uh, we, again, we click Execute. Okay, I will change. So Execute. So uh, as we can see from these slides, the fix rate will improve from about 50 to uh, better than, higher than 92. So let's check if the result is better than this. OK, it's finished. And uh, le again, let's plot the results. So you can see uh, the fix rate here, it's, yes, is about 92%. Uh, and the result is like this. If we compare the results of the continuous mode, so let's see, it's just similar. This is the continuous mode and this is the... So if we check, sorry, it's not so uh, obvious for the Okay, so you can see, I think uh, this one is the instantaneous mode. And actually that's some difference between the instantaneous and the continuous mode. Not only the fixed rate, but also the positioning result. So this is the difference of uh, instantaneous and the continuous mode. So, uh, for RGK lib, when we are processing with the uh, uh, kinematic data like this, because this is actually um, under the urban environment, not open sky. So, when we are processing such data, uh, my recommendation is to use instantaneous mode uh, because RTK lib uh, doesn't uh, handle very well with the continuous mode. So with this instantaneous mode, we can get uh, some uh, higher fixed rate. So this is the difference of instantaneous and uh, continuous mode. And uh, another setting is the SNR, SNR mask we usually use. Um, because for this kinematic data, uh, for example, when we are moving in nearby some buildings, uh, signals from the uh, low elevation maybe suffer from some uh, multipass or something else. So usually these signals have lower SNR value. So we can set the SNR mask to reject some observations which have 
uh, lower as its as in, um, value. So here we can set the as in, uh, value uh, as 30, but this depends uh, on your own setting. You can also change to 35 or something. So this is just for test. So, and uh, with the real data, we can change on the panel of setting one, and uh, you can see this, this SNR mask, and uh, click here, because uh, we didn't check this lower and base station. And uh, if we check this lower, uh, and uh, we input maybe 30 or 35, and this is for L1, this is for L2. Uh, base station, we usually we don't need to check this because base station is usually under an open sky environment. So we don't need to check the base station, only for lower station. So you can try this by your own setting, for example, 35 or something. And uh, we click OK. This means we have set the SNR mask and uh, OK again, and then we can execute uh, with the same data, same data and execute. So waiting. Actually here we already show the results of different SNR mask. And uh, with this data, the fixed rate was improved uh, very little, but for other data, is according to our experience, uh, for some other data, uh, when we set different SNR mask, the fixed rate will be maybe quite different. And the different value, for example, 30 or 35, also differs. So you can try with your own setting and your own data to check this. Uh, how the SNR mask affect the RTK result. So this is uh, some setting we usually use in SN, uh, in RTK mode. And actually there are also some other settings in RTK, especially for the kinematic data. Uh, for example, uh, we can also change the elevation mask and we can also change the code and face ratio uh, because we have also mentioned before that the default setting is 100. Maybe we can change to 300 or 200 like this. And we can also change the minimum ratio. And uh, here I also need to explain what's the minimum ratio. OK, so at in the panel of 32, here there's a minimum value uh, of ratio for fixed ambiguity. And uh, the default setting of article leap, uh, it's three, but sometimes we can change to, uh, for example, 2.5 like this, or even two for the long baseline RTK. And uh, but we should never use values like one or 1.1. This is this will lead to uh, fault or wrong fix if we set to a uh, such uh, small value. So usually the minimum value is between two to three like this. So you can try by your own data um, with different minimum value like this. And another one is the uh, ratio of code and the carrier phase observation. For example, here it's 100, but usually for the kinematic data, we can change to maybe 300, 300. like this. <laughs> So, let's try this 
uh, uh, another one is the GNSS system because this is also uh, very important for RTK. Um, so here we use the full GNSS system. And if you only use GPS, then uh, it's very possible that the fixed rate is much lower than if you use uh, multi GNSS like this. And uh, what I should mention is that GLONASS, actually, we usually we don't use GLONASS because it's very hard to fix the GLONASS ambiguity because it's FDMA, so uh, it's very difficult to fix. But if you are using the same type of receiver, like both uh, net and I oppose UBX, then maybe you can try Kronas. And the way, once you check this Kronas, then this, you can see that here, uh, uh, option of this one, uh, change from gray to editable. So we can, uh, the default setting is uh, ambiguity resolution is on. And uh, because as we mentioned, it's very hard to fix the Kronas ambiguity. So we can change to off, which means this Kronas data is only for helping the float solution. But when change from float solution to fixed solution, we will not use Kronas. This is what the off means. And the on means we will also try to fix Kronas ambiguity, but uh, usually it's very hard to fix. So it depends on you. Uh, you can try both uh, option. And this is for this one is for BDS. Uh, usually it's on. And uh, there are also some other settings. Uh, but because there are so many, so we are not going to explain it one by one. Uh, but you can try different value of these uh, settings. For example, when we change the from one to five or something, then uh, elevation maybe 20 or something else, then you can find that the results of the RTK fixed rates or the RTK performance will change, um, will change. So uh, you can try on your own computer. So this is what you are going to do uh, in the practice session. And also, uh, we should mention that because uh, here we use the lower station, it's from net and I, but we also provide a uh, lower station of a uh, low cost receiver. So you can also try the performance of low cost receiver. What's the performance? Uh, with the same setting, but different uh, receiver. So you can compare the result. And after that, after your own settings and the own choice, uh, I hope you can have some conclusions based on your results. Uh, for example, this is some of the uh, conclusions I get from the previous uh, processing. For example, the static data is uh, much better in fixing rates and uh, positioning accuracy compared with the kinematic data. And we can uh, also see from the previous results. And uh, for RTK leap, uh, this version, uh, we recommend to use instantaneous mode rather than continuous mode for this kinematic data. But for static data, we still uh, use the continuous mode. So this is uh, some conclusions based on the results we get. 
So I think there are many other conclusions when you change your own uh, settings and uh, use different data. So I hope you can find some other conclusions. And uh, so this is uh, introduction of RTK Lib. Uh, this is the official uh, version of RTK Lib. But actually, uh, many other uh, researchers have based on RTK Lib and uh, developed their own uh, improved version of RTK Lib. So, uh, if you have, uh, some of you maybe have very be very familiar with RTK Lib, then if you have time, you can try this some other uh, software that can also uh, process with RTK and uh, DGNSYS or some uh, PPP mode. So I just list some of them. So this one is RTK Explorer. And uh, here I give the website of this. And if we are using the kinematic data, so uh, personally, I will uh, recommend this version rather than RTK Lib. Uh, but you can compare the difference of these two versions. And uh, another one is the modified version of RTK Lib, and you can uh, download uh, execute file of RTK Post from this uh, website. And the list version um, change some, fix some bug of RTK Lib. And the most important uh, modification is that this version use partial ambiguity to better fix the ambiguity. So with this version, uh, normally we can get a higher fix rate. And another one is this, uh, this version a uh, native you can also download and uh, compare with RTK Lib the performance if you have time and uh, the next one is RTK Droid so this is based on the Android uh, version so if you want to use RTK Lib on your smartphone you can download this and uh, I think tomorrow we, Dr. Dinesh will also introduce this software and uh, let's uh, check uh, on tomorrow. So I think this uh, all my presentation, uh, introduction and uh, uh, test with real data. But I think the most important thing is that you should try uh, data with by yourself on your own computer. So I think next we are going to move to uh, your own processing of RTK Lib with the data we provide. And uh, if you have questions, uh, please type in the chat so I will answer some of them. So that's all. Yes. yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. EJ, for this very, very interesting and very important and very well designed data and your explanations. Uh, it's very nice. So thank you very much. I think we have now so many questions. Uh, OK, <laughs> let's try to answer one by one, but some of the questions may be more technically complex or we may not have the answer uh, immediately or you or they or you just need to try yourself just to see the performance with different settings or options or different parameters okay because article leave is a uh, how to say this is a very good uh, software but uh, also it has a very nice uh, gui but sometimes it's a little bit difficult to understand where is what and so a small takes or the small icons uh, settings and so you really need to explore and spend time with this so please try uh, as much as possible to get used to with the software 
to see how it looks like. That's the reason we provided you the data from the uh, high high end uh, receiver like uh, Trimble Net A9 and also uh, from the single frequency low cost receiver or dual frequency low cost receiver and you can do different combinations. So OK, we'll try to answer all the questions as much as possible. So from where shall we start? OK, Dr. EJ, yes. so you can take the, some questions in the chat. OK, is, uh, uh, yeah, please. I will yes. ask uh, uh, as possible as I can. But ah, if Sarah's... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me just give uh, one uh, general comment to all our participants. So please don't think that we are uh, promoting or affiliating to some specific brand because in our PowerPoint, so we're talking about the Ublux, Trimble, Septentrio, and so many other receivers. So we have nothing to do with those companies and we don't intentionally try to promote their products so don't take it otherwise so but uh, we have to use some receiver to do our uh, test and make prepare the training data so we, we so we prepare the data from whatever receivers we use and we have okay so normally we have a trimble we have a u blocks we have septentrio and also we have i think also Novatel, Topcon, Jabat, but we have almost all types of receivers in our lab. But uh, for training, basically we are using the Trimble Neta 9 and uh, U-Blocks receivers and also Septentrio in some cases. Yeah. But we have all sorts of uh, this popular brand uh, re uh, receivers in our lab to do the work or do studies and research. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. I think Dr. Dinesh have already explained the, the meaning, so I will move to, can we use post-processing for other Renix file? Um, I think Renix file is, I don't know, other Renix. The uh, Renix file itself is a standard file, so there is, uh, we, uh, so, so whether the Rhinox file is coming from Trimble or Ublux or Septentrio is the same. That's what I explained in yesterday's presentation, in my presentation in the data format. Probably you did not attend that presentation then. Okay. Yeah, you can use the Rhinox file. That's a yes. receiver independent exchange file. That's the name. Okay. Yes. Rhinox file only differs in different uh, version, like three. Yeah. 0.0203 yeah. like this. Yeah. And the so other constellation. I explained yeah. yesterday and gave the handout. So maybe so he can check my handout. So please check our handout. Okay. Yeah, that's my comment. That's my comment. So we can skip that one. Okay. Why well, Kronos is not. That also just uh, like I already I replied, so we can go to next. Okay. So Kaito has a comment on that. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, that also, yeah, it's just uh, some output from. Uh, That's the average levels. Yeah. Sure. Related to the. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, I think I are also explained that if you are, uh, you didn't set a uh, reference coordinates. In the, but the average process. is just a, uh, it's a precision. So it's the average value of the all the observations. So it doesn't relate it with the coordinate that we sent, but we said, but uh, like in his. Uh, can you show the offset from the origin? Yes. So that's the bias. Okay. So that's what we discussed yesterday about the accuracy and precision, yes. and you get the bias. Okay. So it's a. Uh, so precision is good, but uh, accuracy is uh, not good. Means we have some bias. Yes. So it should be, and this is for standard point positioning, all the red dots, and when we do the DGPS, so we 
we we have a smaller bias. Yes, and uh, if you get a uh, zero value for the average error, I think because you didn't yeah set that, this coordinate array. Yeah. So and maybe so, you the default setting is this average pose. And if you check this, now you can see yeah, yeah. it's zero. So, so uh, easy. Can you show that one? The yeah yeah this one. The yes. not the average, not a coordinate origin to lat long. Yeah, lat long. Be, be, no, no. Uh, yeah, lat long height. The value. This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know whether some of you, whether you were in the yesterday's presentation while I was doing it. So I was talking about the accuracy and the precision. OK, so this average is just a precision. So we take the average value of all the observations and that's what you get it. The average or standard mean and standard deviation is a precision. So your precision may be very good, but the accuracy may be not good. So accuracy means we compare the error with respect to the true point. In this case, the true point is our lat long height. This is the best station coordinate and we take this coordinate as a true point and then we measure the bias. OK, so can you show? Yeah, now you see from the origin to the mean value of this rate. So that's our accuracy now. So we have uh, some bias here. So to remove this bias, to also to remove this bias and get a better accuracy, not only the better precision, but also better accuracy, we do the DGPS. Okay? So here's the difference yes. between SPP and DGPS. So yes. the the mean value between SPP and DGPS may not be much different, OK? But the standard deviation will be smaller in the DGPS and you will have a smaller uh, bias. Okay, So the DGPS result will be more closer to the true value. So we improve the accuracy. So that's the yes. difference between SPP and DGPS. OK? Yes. OK. okay. Already explained very detail. So, ah, uh, yes, here yeah, some people. I want to do PPP. Yes, uh, you should also prepare the SP3 precise orbit and the precise clock, and also the uh, ATX file, which correct the PCO and PCV of satellites and the receiver. And uh, uh, you uh, can also prepare the DCP file, DCP file, which correct the DCP of satellites, and uh, also you should also prepare the tidal correction file, which uh, you can get from the uh, website and uh, which correct the uh, ocean tide correction. So to perform PPP, you should prepare some other files. Yeah, a lot, lot of other input files. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, dear. This has been explained. But today's our presentation is basically an RTK, so we are not talking about PPP at all. So tomorrow you can see a little bit on these settings, but we are not going in details about the PPP in this uh, three days uh, training. So actually this is just the one day of this RTK. We focus more on the RTK. Tomorrow we'll talk a little bit on the PPP, but it will be more on the demo and to just to show you how our uh, Madoka PPP receiver or system, which we develop, how it works and how you can use it. But I can show you some of these files that you need. But the way you do PPP, because you have a Septentrio receiver, so you better contact your Septentrio receiver manufacturer because they have, they know the best what they need because PPP algorithm may be different from what we implement because we use the Madoka PPP, but Septentrio, they may have another way of doing the PPP. 
the algorithm are different. So please contact your manufacturers because we don't know this Polar Expro and all these. Uh, there are so many uh, receiver manufacturers. Okay, and this separatory is a quite uh, good receiver, I think, and also quite expensive. So please ask them. They or check their user manual. They, it should be all the details provided. Yeah. Yes, and uh, so for some other files, uh, I can type in the chat later. So I will give you some uh, links to download some of the files. The post file has corrected version uh, position. Uh, so the post file is the coordinate uh, we get from like SPP or PPP. So this is the just the coordinate or position we get using RTK lib. Yeah, that's that's the corrected position output. Am I right? So this is the result of the processing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, result. Just a result. And uh, Q equals four. Yes, it's DZNSS. <laughs> okay. Only face. Uh, yes, you can input a higher value of um, the ratios between code and the carry face. And uh, in this way, then the uh, weight of code observation is decreased. Then in the results, it will much more rely on phase or carrier phase of the ratio. Yes, you can input a higher value. But uh, how how do you do you know? Do you have experience on this? How how will it affect the results? Like uh, if I give more weight to my the phase observation data, yes. so how will it affect the? Uh. Result. Do you have uh, some experience on this? Uh, yes. Uh, for for you... example, in the kinematic, maybe it's uh, worse because we have yes. lots of uh, cycle sleep. Yes. I, I, uh, I don't know which one is better. So I kinematic. will explain this by here. So this is, uh, for example, the default setting is 100. So which mm. means um, for example, uh, usually the observation noise of carrier phase is three millimeter. So when it is 100, mean, which means the covariance of uh, code observation is um, 30 centimeter. But if we change to 300, which means uh, we assume that the covariance of code observation is 90 centimeter. So uh, in the kinematic uh, data, usually the observation noise of code observation is larger because it suffer from multipass. So we should give a, a higher ratio to uh, assume that the code observation has a larger uh, noise. Mm -hmm. So in this way, uh, the uh, contribution of this code observation will decrease. So we mm -hmm. will much rely on phase observation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this okay. is um, common filter, and mm -hmm. if you check the yeah. covariance matrix. Okay. Uh, yeah, how, how about this? Uh, is it? I think it's already included in 3.4 because uh, they have been requesting for <laughs> more than one year to yes. include in believe. Yes, yes. This is the uh, okay. very uh, difference uh, of uh, the big difference between 
B33 and the 34. Okay. Okay. And the, okay. in this version, now we can use the Navic, Navic okay. constellation. Oh, okay, so, okay, so when was this released? I think this is released just, just recently. Yes. Just a month maybe. ago, I think, yeah. 20 days okay, ago. Good, good. Yeah. But now, so now you Navic can... is fully supported. Yes. So our colleagues from India. So now Navic is fully supported in uh, Arctic Leaf because uh, we have received this request for <laughs> more than two years. But uh, Dr. Takasu, who developed this Arctic Leaf, was very, very busy. So we sent him the request so many times and now it's already done. So please do the data processing using the Navic uh, signal and let us know the performance, how it is. Uh, so we can do some uh, error or accuracy analysis using GPS and Navic, or I don't know, only Navic is possible or not at the moment, L5 signal. So if it is possible, so that will be very, very interesting to see how the results look like. Also, we can try here if uh, we have a Navic receiver. At least I don't have uh, at the moment. Maybe, maybe uh, how about, our uh, data is include. Do, do you have a Navic uh, receiving capacity in TUMSAT at the moment? Uh, but uh, I think this data doesn't include Navic. Okay. okay, okay, because the receiver is not capable, I think. So yes, I, I would like to request our colleagues from India if they can provide us some uh, data, like a 24 hours observation data at the 15 second or 30 second interval, so we can do some analysis or it, this data can be another good example for this type of training because everybody doesn't don't have uh, access to to Navic uh, because of the visibility like a QGSS. So please provide us some sample data for a few days uh, log in different times. I mean different days of a month or different months in a year or something like that. I suppose that some of the institutes in India or like ISRO, they are logging the data all the time. So please provide some sample data so that we can uh, process and see. Also, we need to test this uh, article leave to find out the bugs because it's just a uh, release. Probably there are some bugs. So all the users of article leave, they contribute to improve article leave itself. So we need the bug uh, report as well. So, but for that, we need uh, uh, good data as well. So please provide data. Thank you. Yes, we can try the data of NEVIC to check the performance. So why we only consider codes based on uh, well, if you consider carrier phase, then I think it will change to PPP. So the difference between SPP and PPP is PPP use carrier phase and uh, correct all errors. So then this is PPP mode. Uh, sorry, can I, uh, let me put one more comment to this question because this is uh, rather important because uh, we are talking about uh, why don't we use the carry phase, okay? If you look at the receiver, the receiver that output court phase is cheaper. The receiver that output the carry phase is a little bit more expensive. And if you look at the receiver, the specification, so some receivers, they say, DGPS capable means it just output the quote phase data. It doesn't output the carrier phase data. Okay. And those receivers that outputs up to the DGPS is, I mean, in terms of the uh, price, it's uh, not expensive. Okay. Within a few tens of dollars, you can buy it. But once you go to the carrier phase, then it's more expensive. So from the price index also we have to consider. And also like uh, some uh, ICAO and all, so the receivers should be code phase compatible means SBUS, okay? So when we are talking about the DGPS using the SBUS, so that's the code phase uh, differential correction data. So 
and uh, if you buy a receiver, you will see GPS or DGPS capable or SBUS capable means it output the court phase data, but it doesn't output the care phase. Okay, and uh, so this is with respect to the receiver time and the cost that uh, you have to consider. And another another factor is uh, the like uh, many Android uh, devices that have uh, this raw data output. So most of the raw data output are code phase. Very few receivers, they provide the care phase data. Okay. So if you want to use the internal ZNSS receiver in the Android, so you have a code phase data, but very few, they provide the care phase. Okay. And also some of them don't provide the raw, raw navigation data. Yeah. Okay, yes, thank you. So our next question is about the difference between continuous and the fixed and hold mode. Uh, yes, uh, we have explained the difference between uh, instantaneous and uh, continuous. So as for the difference between continuous and fixed and hold, um, continuous means we estimate the ambiguity from the first epoch to the uh, epoch until this satellite is disappear and it's estimate as a constant value. And uh, for the fix and hold mode, uh, which means once we think this satellite is fixed, so we think this ambiguity have uh, uh, correctly estimate, then we fix this ambiguity. For example, this satellite has the ambiguity of two cycles. Then in the next epoch, we force this ambiguity as two. So which means we believe this ambiguity is two and we trust it. So this means fix and the hold means we give a very small covariance on these satellites. So usually for the um, uh, static mode, fix and hold can get a better performance. But for kinematic uh, mode, for kinematic data, you should be very careful because if we uh, fix the ambiguity and not correctly fix, then we we hold it, it's very dangerous because you have a wrong fix. So yeah. this is the difference. So be, be careful when we when you use fix and hold because uh, the receiver may tell you it's a fix, the pros output article leave, but it's a false fix. It's not actually fix, but it's still saying it's a fixed solution. So please be careful. So don't use this for kinematic. For static in a good environment, like if you have uh, antennas in the open space and on the rooftop and a nice area and a good antenna, probably it's OK. But if you are putting on a car, so don't use a fix and hold. You will get the fix all the time, but actually it's not a fix. So it's a false fix. Okay? Be careful about this. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes. Minimum fix rate continuous. Uh, well, this uh, fix rate it depends on your demand, your accuracy uh, you want. Um, but uh, normally for kinematic data, it's not possible to get 100% fix rate. So uh, what we are going to do, our the researchers are going to do, is to uh, get higher fix rates and uh, improve the algorithm based on RTK leap. And uh, this uh, what we are going to do. But the acceptable fix rates, uh, well, it's hard to say, and uh, it depends on your demands.
what's the maximum distance for it to be considered? Uh, well, yes. We uh, have this we question have... maybe more than five times. <laughs> yes, the similar question from um, previous from session. From yesterday. <laughs> Great. Yes, depends on your your data, the anospheric uh, variation. But for the very long longer baseline, then you should change the positioning mode and change the equilibrium. Receiver sending out the mode. Don't don't increase the baseline more than 20, 30, more than 40 kilometer. Definitely, I think for RTK it's not good. I mean, the, for the previous question, sorry. Yes. Uh, so this question is actually no. We we log the raw data. We log the raw data. We didn't have uh, this type of uh, RTK mode or like that. But we need the we we set the receiver to log the raw data. Raw data means carrier phase and uh, this navigation data and all, so that you can make your own Rhinex observation and navigation data. So once you have that data, so you can do the post processing as you like. You can do DGPS, you can do RTK, you can do PPP, whatever. Okay. Yes, this is mm. what we are, we are using the RTK post. So which means this is for post processing mm. and we have uh, get the data. But for real application, and for mm -hmm. real time, time. Yeah. we usually use RTK Navy, but mm -hmm. the setting is same as RTK Post. I mean mm. the options part. Yeah. So it's as also fix. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah. continuous also. Yeah. But uh, uh, sometimes it's not as good as instantaneous mm. modes for this version of RTK. Yeah. Uh, but by, by the way, which which is better for single frequency rover? Uh, for single frequency, I think uh, theoretically we should use continuous yes. mode. Continuous, because, okay. Mm. Yes, single frequency is very hard to fix yeah. ambiguity yeah. using yeah. instantaneous. Okay. So when I say single frequency, it's not for the base, it's only for the rubber. So for example, yeah. if you have a single frequency uh, MAT, low cost uh, receiver, MAT or MAT-P, so better to use the continuous mode. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, RTK yeah. is better in DGPS. Even when we did our measurement in static mode for 12 to 24 hours for a geodetic network, is it better to process in RTK mode? Yeah, definitely. So actually, so do we have time or maybe? OK, so unless you do the RTK, so you cannot remove all many of other errors. So you have to do the post processing. I mean, not the process process. I mean, you you need to do the error error removing technique. That's uh, either DGPS or RTK. That has to be done. So it doesn't matter whether you have a ten thousand dollar or hundred dollar receiver. If you just do the ten hours or twelve hours observation, and if you take do the SPP and take a mean, so you still your precision. The mean value may be very small. The standard deviation may be one meter like that or smaller but you have a bias okay so that bias means you are off from the true point so it doesn't matter whether you observe long you still have those errors so you have to remove some of those errors by doing differential observation differential correction either dgps at least or rtk or you do the ppp 
Yeah. Yes. If we want to get a precise result, it's better to use RTK or PPP. Mm. Uh, difference between instantaneous and continuous. And I think we have explained mm. this. Yeah. Uh, instantaneous means mm. we didn't continuously estimate this ambiguity. Mm. For different epoch and the same satellite, we use to uh, we estimate two ambiguities so there's no relationship between two epochs of the ambiguity hmm. yeah i think Linux uh all version is accept hmm. from Linux 2 to Linux 3. Yeah, 3.04, I think now, yeah. yeah so you can just right. check in the RTK convert. So please check in the RTK leaf. So go to the RTK, the file conversion format, and you see the Linux version that you can select, okay? So please check the document and the software. That's the easiest way to do, confirm. Mm. Why got large MS for instantaneous continuous, continuous structure? Well, I think if you uh, fix uh, the ambiguity, correctly fix, then you can get a centimeter or better uh, than centimeter accuracy. Uh, yeah. Or another another problem, maybe the coordinate of your base station is not good enough. Sometimes, uh, yes. uh, Sometimes that's a problem, OK? You don't sometimes you don't get a solution at all if you input the wrong base base station coordinate. So please make sure that your base station antenna coordinate is correct. Okay. If you have a very large offset there, because then you will not get a good good result as well. Sometimes it doesn't output. You don't get a solution. So try with a wrong wrong coordinate. You can check it. Yes. So this is for PPP. Uh, yes, I can send you a URL to download this uh, later. Mm -hmm. Let me check. I uh, doing post processing static raw data with difference. Yes, they can be in different version. Yes. Well, I think it convert doesn't support converting of T02, mm. but you can convert mm. Uh, mm. from the software that mm. provide by Trimble. Mm. Trimble, yeah. Yes. So this is the Trimble output file. That means you have a Trimble receiver. So please ask your Trimble company to provide the converter, or you can download from the internet. Just search in the internet with a keyword uh, convert from T file to Rhinex. You will get the program and you can convert there. Okay. Yes. Uh, we're going to over. Well, this is for the Dinesh, I think. Oh, what is ABCD? So I'm not sure. OK, anyway, so we are going to Madoka some demo and uh, some other stuff like uh, Android version and so on. So please check the schedule for tomorrow. Uh, well, this is for RTK. And mm. uh, yes, uh, if you have high-end uh, receiver, you have a better observation quality, then the performance is better than low-cost receiver. Mm. And but also this distance mm. depends on the ionospheric uh, mm. activity. Sometimes for low latitude regions, maybe not this uh, mm. 30, 40 mm. kilometers. Mm. Yeah. What Japan so the, yeah, the value we are talking is for high end receiver. We are not talking about the low end receiver, this maximum, this uh, not the maximum, but this recommended distance, OK? For the low cost, maybe it's just a 10 kilometer or less to have a centimeter level accuracy. You can't go to 30, 40 kilometers. 
Yeah. Let's share that. Okay. Can I correct the RPC? In our position. This question uh, is a little bit not clear to me. So do you want, does he want to correct in real time? So this is the real time. I mean, we do the processing in real time or I don't know. Do, do you understand the uh, easy this question? Oh, does he mean that maybe you are going to perform RTK by your own software? And uh, we will need to correct errors. Yeah, that's what we are doing in the RTK. So we are correcting the errors. So what type of errors are? So we are correcting orbit error, clock error. Okay. Basically, these are the two errors, orbit and clock. And then the ionospheric modeling, tropospheric modeling. So four types of uh, errors to be corrected. Yes, when we using articulib, uh, articulib can correct these errors. Mm -hmm. But if you want to develop your own software, you need to correct mm -hmm. these errors. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, yes, I think if you have a uh, receiver that the coordinate is known, then you can estimate the ionospheric delay, then you can uh, get an uh, estimated rate or the absolute TC value. May add your process just network. Uh, well, the GUI version mm. can only process a uh, single mm. baseline, mm. but it doesn't it, support network at all. Yes. Well, I think these are all our questions. Mm -hmm. So I think you can process the data by yourself and uh, maybe you can have maybe you have other okay. questions or something okay so let me let me show just a few two or three slides from uh, because there are so many questions related with uh, these errors and all. So actually, I'll be doing this tomorrow, but uh, while we are doing all these discussions, so I would like to show this one or two slides. So can I just share my screen? Yes, you can share, yes. OK, I so I suppose that you can see now. So OK. So this is what you saw today from uh, Dr. EJ's uh, presentation and Kobayashi. So we have the, this uh, standard point poisoning. Sorry, this is standard point poisoning, not single. So right, so all these scatter and then we do the DGPS. So we have uh, this type of very nice scatter around the origin. Okay, and then we have this uh, RTK. So we want to go from this red to blue to and then the green. So this is our uh, objective or how we do the processing in the real in the RTK. So if you don't do any error correction technique, you will have this output regardless whether you have a $10,000 receiver or $100 receiver because it is, of course, good receiver have uh, this maybe a little bit better but never like this okay you can't get the centimeter accuracy because you know the wavelength is 20 centimeter and you have antenna that is 10 centimeter in diameter so how can you measure one centimeter or two centimeter with a 10 centimeter diameter antenna okay, that's uh, extremely difficult 
Okay. So you have to remove all these uh, errors and do some very special uh, signal processing technique called the care phase. So because the care phase, the wavelength is 19 centimeter, and if you can measure half of the wavelength, that's a 10 centimeter. Okay, and one quarter is a five centimeter. So one tenth of the wavelength is about a two centimeter. So that's how you need to the the the, the receiver, the signal processing is done. So if you look at the error, so we have these errors, satellite orbit error, clock error, and uh, this is the atmospheric and tropospheric error and multipath. So these errors you can remove. So in DGPS or in the RTK, you remove these common errors, okay? That's the reason why we need to look the same satellites at both base and the rover. Okay? So this removes uh, these errors we can remove totally to orbit error and clock error this we can reduce by doing uh, some a model or doing some observation technique using a dual frequency receiver but we can't make it zero so for example it's about three four meters so we, we can reduce to half a meter so with this so we can reduce but some of the multipath, that's a reflection coming from nearby buildings or trees or mountains so you cannot do that Okay, this will remain. So this is the most critical. Uh, so the our intention of uh, signal processing is to remove these errors. And now you see two to four and four. So this eight meters, six, seven meters of error will reduce to half a meter like that after you do it. Okay. So I think I showed you this one yesterday, the RTK, what we did today. And so many of you saw this figure less than 40 kilometers. This is recommended, not the uh, strict requirement, but it won't be better when you, it increases. Okay, And this is the PPP. So this one we see tomorrow. Okay. So that's all. Okay. Okay, so that's all from my side. And do we have more questions? Also, it's already time. And uh, if we don't have uh, additional questions, so we'd like to stop here. And before we close today, so I would like to give a little bit uh, some outline about tomorrow's uh, program. So let me just share tomorrow's uh, program, what we are going to do tomorrow. Uh, let me just check. Um, so I, I have some uh, uh, announcement or request to you for tomorrow. Uh, let me share the Excel program. So I suppose you can see now for tomorrow. OK, so this is for tomorrow. So in the uh, first hour we'll do about the Madoka. So basically I will explain about the Madoka and uh, data processing in Madoka. And here we have RTK data processing. So this you will be doing yourself tomorrow. Please do it in your computer. And if you have a problem, so if you want to ask, so we can do in the chat or you can put the speaker on, microphone on and you can ask us. But please be very precise in the question because of language and all. It may be difficult for us, so better to write, type your question in the chat, and then maybe if you need to explain, then we can do that. Okay. So I will be here, and Mr. Abhinav, and I suppose uh, Mr. Kobayashi, Kaito, and uh, Dr. Ije. So Ije, are, are you available tomorrow? Is it okay for you? The time? No, yes, I am available. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Both. So they are available. So because they know more on the, this uh, data processing, I don't know much because they use a lot and they are very much experienced and uh, they they know uh, in very deep in, in detail. So they are the experts in the, this RTK leave data processing. So uh, when they are here, so please uh, ask them. And uh, I and I have one very important request to the participants. So please join on time and please avoid to enter the session in the middle okay because you will not be able to catch and 
when you are sending joining so we get a lot of this uh, screen pop up so it's a little bit distracting as well so please try to be on time as much as possible uh, also because tomorrow is the last day and we we have a lot of things to do tomorrow so in the morning about one hour i'll do this one on madoka and then you will be doing the data processing one hour i think one hour is uh, enough to do it our uh, sample data or if you have your data from your station so you can do that as well that that will be better than the sample data and also some requests to our colleagues from india so if you have a navig data please do that and show us the results and then we'll have a break for one hour but during this break this is not a break actually so this is uh, we do a course evaluation and uh, ICG will put send you the link to send your evaluation comments and suggestions how you feel about this uh, online training and we need to improve this type of training so I uh, we know that this is not very effective but uh, I, we can do something at least and uh, rather than doing nothing uh, physically so we want to try our best to do whatever possible but please give us uh, your frank suggestion just don't say it's okay it's good so we really don't know what is okay and what is good so please write few words uh, how we can improve it and that's very important for us to improve our future program and then uh, we would like to have some of you to present your results because uh, that's uh, what we do when we do the physically this presentation so we make a team from uh, different uh, groups uh, members and then so when we have uh, about 100 uh, like that so we'll have at least um, around maybe 20 teams so but this time it's not possible to make such teams and we don't have time as well so those whoever would like to present so please uh, let us know tomorrow during the break and please do it but please be careful that uh, you don't have more than three minutes so you don't need to show everything just make uh, five slides uh, first slide is your title and name and then the, another two or three slides your input data and output data and the last one so you talk a little bit about what you want to do from now on okay uh, and put some comments on the results you found that's all and then we'll have a little bit of a QA and the general discussions at the end and then we finish but uh, this uh, course evaluation and comment suggestions is very very important so please do it during this uh, time period okay so this is a must for you who attend tomorrow uh, don't 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 uh, forget otherwise it's difficult for us to improve our program okay so this is the program schedule for tomorrow so i hand over to icg shafa and patrick for additional announcements and yeah some notice thank you dinish uh, well we we agree with you and we support what what you just had said so we will start tomorrow uh, at 6 10 uh, utc time uh, well the the presentations which were made yesterday and uh, those which were made today are already available on the website. We informed you about that yesterday. We will post uh, uh, right now the presentation on, on Madoka, which is going to be presented tomorrow, also on the website, and the questionnaire, feedback questionnaire. We will uh, send you the link and would appreciate if you could complete it um, at your earliest uh, opportunity so that we uh, when we prepare the summary of this workshop, we can already reflect uh, your feedback. Well, with that, I conclude. Um, and I would like ask Patrick if he has any anything related to logistic to to tell you. Thank you. Thanks, Shafa. No, nothing to add from my side. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, Have a good okay, so day. just one more comment from me. So yeah. I, I forgot to request one more thing to the participants. So tomorrow when I do the Madoka this demo, data processing demo, I can do this online. And if some of you can allow me to access your station through the entry, 
mm-hmm. like in Africa or in uh, South America or in uh, Pacific or India or wherever. So I'll be happy, very happy to do the access if you have a Trimble or some other dual frequency receiver, Septentrio, Trimble or whatever. Any dual, refer- uh, dual frequency receiver will work for Madoka. And then I'll show you how I can or we can do Madoka processing with your receiver. And we'll send the correction data from here to your receiver or not. I will I will get the data from your receiver to here and I'll collect the correction Madoka correction data from the QGSS satellite here, but we'll correct for your receiver in Africa or India or wherever. Even if uh, Madoka is not visible, QGS is not visible, it is possible to do that. So that demo I can make if you, I can access the receiver. Okay. But this has to be in real time. So <laughs> we need the internet connection to your, your system, your receiver. That's possible. So if any of you have uh, that type of uh, capacity to allow to access the data, so please let me know. I can, I will make a demo on that as well. Okay, so with this, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye.